Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. Tate. Yeah, I was gonna say, should we get into Andrew Tate? Yeah, I know that everyone so is itching who wants for to us intro to this because I've kind of I read a bit about it, but I don't know. Um, maybe I missed some things. You didn't see? Okay. <clears throat> so mind you, I have no bunch of back information on him, but I know today's yesterday's events to today's events because I just discovered him. He's my white person of the week that I didn't know. <laughs> um, you know, I had like tangentially heard about the name, and then I was like, mm, this seems to be a problem. I don't, I don't want to take this on, and I so I just didn't investigate. Anyhow, so you know the the little the climate girl, the climate activist, right? Greta. Mm -hmm. Greta, Greta Thunberg. Yeah, so he starts fucking with Greta online, just clout chasing. Randomly. And, and that's fucking. And and by his own admission, in the very corny video that he subsequently goes to put on, he he does a whole little piece about how oh he's actually the winner because you know by by engaging with him, his social media is getting so much more attention. And I'm like, not you, just out here admitting to clout chasing unprovoked. You snitching on yourself, unprovoked. So. <laughs> Uh -huh. Based on his own admission, he was cloud chasing, bothering Gre uh, Greta. And he puts up, like, I think a picture of him in some cars. And he was like, oh, I have all these cars. These cars put out all these emissions. You want to email me something, something? Can I email you something about the cars? Like, trying to flex. And Greta was basically like, yeah, email me at smalldickgetafuckinglife.com. <laughs> like, <laughs> smalldickenergy at getalife.com. Get like yeah. Yeah. And so... He gets fucking ratioed. <laughs> okay. Into oblivion. That's I just checked by the way before he went on. It's at three million likes. Greta's response is at three million likes. So this might be the biggest ratio ever. Listen, love it. Excellent. Chef's kiss. So he gets and this is how I see in this. This man. <clears throat> this grown ass individual went and put on a fucking robe. Got two boxes of pizza, and the pizza is very important. The pizza is gonna come into play in a significant mm -hmm. way, all right? So it's two boxes of Jerry's pizza sitting right there. Mm. So he puts on this very sassy robe, and then he gets a cigar and he puffs the cigar, and he's like, "Ooh, letting out these emissions," because like he owned Greta, right? Um. So then, <laughs> then he starts. <laughs> this man starts explaining how why Greta is the enemy. So he says that the, this girl thinks that she's doing 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 God's work, but the poor little lamb is confused, essentially. He said, she's trying to convince y'all to convince your government to tax you into poverty in order, in order to save the sun. That's very important. That's very important. Like we have to stop right there. That right there. Let's, let's stop. I I don't I don't appreciate <laughs> the ability for us to just glide past that because <laughs> no because why how who and when the fuck how does he believe that like cl the climate crisis is about doing the sun some favors, <laughs> 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 sir. <laughs> He must know he's full of shit, right? Like he's no, this is not I, his actual beliefs. Oh yeah. He oh, has yeah. to know. I know he knows he's full of shit. Like obviously, like you could see a loser. Like losers know that they're losers. Mm -hmm. like, you can see it in the soul, real insecure, down bad, you know, chasing behind, bartering with a 19-year-old girl, like admittedly cloud cloud chasing, ball as ever. Just all kind of issues, right? Like 
the man obviously that goes without saying but i actually think that he that's his his understanding of the climate crisis like i think because clearly he only skimmed whatever whatever they assigned him he skimmed it right like you get you you must see the bullet points he's seeing sun he saw sun we got to save the sun <laughs> <laughs> he like, the work got it, and he was like, "Not this bitch. Want us to be out here and be sun warriors?" <laughs> First of all, that just, that right there is the funniest shit to me. Like he might as well told me <laughs> he don't believe dinosaurs was real. <laughs> like, sir, bro, the sun's trying to fuck you up. No one's trying to protect the sun, bro. We're trying to protect us, bro. There's a whole like dog. <laughs> I like. Fuck being a like, fuck being a scientist, right? Like this isn't you don't. I'm not gonna have an intellectual scholarly discussion. I could, but this is what I'm gonna say. Did you feel the sun this summer? Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Because I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> okay, I knew. I said whatever, like whatever layer they used to be, is not fucking there no more. It's gone. It's it's gone. This is he like the heat this summer was so fucking violent. I felt irresponsible. Like, you know, what I mean? like, like I felt going outside in the sun felt like the equivalent of starting my day doing hard drugs. Like, I'm like, wow, like that's crazy. <laughs> like you would go out here and willingly get fucking melanoma fucking around with this sun <laughs> hitting you directly. No filter. <laughs> that's how I was giving it up. And this man, oh, you're talking about, oh, they trying to get you to protect the sun. We got to make it stronger. <laughs> It's not, yeah, he it's said not hot something. <laughs> somebody in the comments says that apparently he said to stop the sun from being hot. Greta wants you to get your government to stop the sun from being hot. I mean, to even say that, like, he just is deeply stupid. Somebody else also pointed out that he is apparently against reading, and so that anyone who reads is like, I guess, weak or something like that. Uh, one thing that I have to comment on is he did a bunch of like quote tweets in response to Greta Thunberg. And a bunch of them got really creepy. I actually have them on my phone. I'll, oh, I'll read yeah. them for you. But um, one thing that I didn't realize until today is that he directly responded to her. And his first response to her in response to uh, saying that he has small dick energy was, how dare you? Like, that was his actual response. So, like, you can tell she hit a pressure point. Like, she hit him on his biggest insecurity. And, like, he's super transparent. You, He's one of those individuals where you can just tell he has low self-esteem. And he should have low self-esteem. Like, he is a loser. He acts like a loser. Uh, I also found out, because I'm one of these people who was previously ignorant to Andrew Tate, that he has music videos. And he... I know you fucking lying. He has music videos, I and he is a rapper. I what? know and they, you fucking lying, Mike. They are exactly as you would imagine it. Is it recent? Uh, <laughs> like, recent stuff? Um, or like, I don't like in know his past? how recent. Within, like, a year or so. So this is, like, him in his current, like, state. Like, it looks relatively recent. I don't know the date. And he has multiple music videos. And he has uh, somebody on the hook with auto-tune. It's, it's really, like, it's its own thing. Like, it's a whole rabbit hole that we have to uh, go into. But I got to get to the uh, the tweet that he sent. Or basically what he said in response to Greta Thunberg. So, like, somebody said that she just needs... um what What is it that they said in particular? Let me see here. I, uh... It's one or a six. She just needs like some. She needs she, a good dick. Or you know, yeah, no, that's like, basically. Y'all need to just go ahead and stop flirting. Go ahead and fuck. And he was like, she ain't ready. Yeah, no. yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she, she's a nineteen year old. Like, keep in mind, like I thought she was not that old yet. So she's like, too young for him, basically. She's a little kid. That's... Yeah, yeah. Because it, he's he's like isn't isn't that why he was arrested now? Because he's been. Yeah, human trafficking. Yeah. Um, apparently. Uh, there's rape allegations as well. So that's that's basically why everybody is talking about him. So we're kind of getting to that now. He was arrested in Romania because there were multiple women who were being held against their will. Uh, he was forcing them, him and his brother, and I believe there's other suspects as well, two other suspects, were allegedly forcing these women to produce pornography under the threat of violence if they did not. And they were putting that up on OnlyFans. And some of these women were there under false pretenses. One of the girls was a U.S. citizen. And the reason why they uh, got tipped off to this was because she contacted her ex, who then contact, uh, contacted the authorities. Um, I think maybe like the U.S. embassy or whatnot. But um, the biggest reason why he is currently 
in jail right now is because of this beef with, with Greta. I know that uh, Olayami, you like alluded to this. So do you want to <laughs> do you want to get to that? The fucking Jerry's pizza box. They go on and look up <laughs> the Romanian authorities. <laughs> Look up the Greta. They look up the Jerry's Pizza Box. Realizes within a certain mile radius from where he's staying, and they track him from from him putting the damn pizza in there. That's how they got him. That's, That's amazing. How it, it, his yeah. attempt at like dunking on her got him arrested. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. That... It was bad. It was so bad just by itself. But it was even worse because it got him to get arrested. It, it's yeah, amazing. So it's an amazing story. From... Alejandra Caraballo pointed this out. Roman authorities needed proof that Andrew Tate was in the country, so they reportedly used his social media posts. His ridiculous video yesterday featured a pizza from a Romanian pizza chain, Jerry's Pizza, confirming he was in the country. So because he confirmed that he was in the country in this video where he was dunking on uh, Greta Thunberg, that's what got him arrested. It's just, it, it's beautiful. It's I a beautiful it. story. No, I love it. It's, it's absolutely excellent. Personally, yeah. I'm like... I love that. I found out about him yesterday, and he's in jail today. <laughs> <laughs> you have power. He's one of these guys that I've, I've like, actively avoided talking about or thinking about, like, reading it. Because of the little that I did see, He he's, like, he's too much asshole for me to deal with. Like, the, mm -hmm. like typically, like, you know, the news cycle, I deal with, like, whoever assholes in politics. He's, like, three assholes in one. And it's just, it's too much for, like, there, because I do this shit every day. There are certain stories, certain events, certain people that I'm just like, you know what? I don't need to do that. You're all, everyone else is doing that. They can do that. <laughs> this is too much for me to handle. This guy's too much of a fucking asshole. Um, so I'm glad now that hopefully the story's over and <laughs> there's no reason to ever cover him again because he's now arrested. <laughs> no, and shoot, listen, I don't, I don't feel like those authorities going to play with him because they rounded his ass up quick <laughs> with the quickness. They said, wait. Wait a second. Somebody got his pin. Drop the pin. <laughs> Drop the pin. <laughs> You're going to get him right now. I mean, yeah, the, these are these are not not like anything to fuck around. Like these are serious charges. Um, I wasn't sure how deep you all wanted to go into this, but I did want to address a tertiary character in the Andrew Tate cinematic universe. Um, another individual who I recently found out about a dickhead I wish I hadn't known. His name is Aiden Ross, and he kind of went viral recently because he didn't know what fascism was. Um, and there's I've covered a clip him of before, him. before all this, actually, like a year Have ago. Have you really? Okay. I did not know about him prior to that clip of him before he was apparently going to bring on Ye. And, what was his name? Uh, A-D-I-N, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So he comes from um, eSports, I believe. Uh, so, oh, like, Okay. When I covered him, I covered him because I had actually Matt Bender was on the show. Um, mm. He was doing a, a crypto, so Aiden Ross was like selling some fake crypto bullshit. Of it was course like one of those, those those pump and dump schemes. So um, he was one of a few people that were doing this in that esports scene. So I had Bender on to talk about that, but yeah. So it's it's not surprising that the same individual, you know, was going to talk to Andrew like this. People like this, it, it, it's amazing to me that they they're able to, first of all, even develop a sort of like fan base. Like I get if, you know, if you're good in esports, you're good, whatever. But then to continue keeping that fan base while you're clearly a uh, an asshole, <laughs> like, yeah. to, and you've screwed your own, your own supporters by, the, by telling them to buy this crypto trash, this, this shit coin, and then they lose money, at least whoever invested lose, loses money. Like, how do you maintain a support base after you knowingly screw your own people to make yourself money? I'll tell you yeah. how. Because, and all jokes aside, it's because he's a loser and he appeals to other losers, right? But like he's living out the fantasy that they want. It's the same way, like when you think about it, right? You ever see somebody like they are a loser and they start performing a personality that you know is not theirs. You can see that they insecure. Everybody sees it and it's real corny. But I wanted them, if one of them is able to become successful at it, to actually a pair to, you know, they're gonna go give that the love because they're living vicariously through that. They can see themselves in that guy. If that guy, who they under, because they know, deep down, they could see it. They could see it. They could see what we all see. They know, and they resonate with that. You know what I mean? That's what makes them, you know, feel, you know, connected to him. So they like to see, they like to see that guy win. And that's a part of, it's the, it's for them. It's not really so much about him, but it's what they projected onto him, you know? Like, oh, so it doesn't surprise me. But let me tell you what does, with does it does surprise me this Aiden Ross character let me have to address the first tweet I see on his page he said 
Now, I ain't going to lie, though. Joe Biden, please go ahead and pardon Andrew Tate. Donald Trump would have been on it already. Unfortunate this. I did this because that's the yawn emoji he used. Unfortunately, Trump clears you, Sleepy Joe. And the tweet is, by the way, as I'm looking at it, the shit getting more likes and retweets. And that is a dangerous thing about America's education system. And that's something, <laughs> no, no, no. This country goes around acting like a world power, parading over everybody, first world nation. Joe Biden, Trump. president of Romania, I didn't realize. <laughs> Joe Biden, please go ahead and pardon Andrew Tate. What? A British citizen? <laughs> Like, why didn't they leave you behind? What What is going on? You clearly need more. <laughs> like, you need more assistance, okay? Are there the- Are there American laws that he broke? Maybe the, Maybe there's some. Is there any truth to that at all? Like, or is it just what he did in Romania that that's why he's he's captured? I mean, he. I don't know if he's. I don't know enough about him to really speak on this honestly. But like, yeah. he's not being charged with federal uh, breaking federal laws. So like. There's no way that Biden would be able to pardon him even if he wanted to. But it's not like Aiden Ross is just like reading this news story and reacting. This is somebody who knows Andrew Tate. So recently there's a photo that is hilarious going around that looks like a porn, um, a porn screenshot where it's a photograph of Andrew Tate wearing a robe with like his chest exposed. And then you have Aiden Ross on the side he's sitting there like in a kind of a submissive looking position and he's like <laughs> yeah. like i don't know if you've seen this photograph but it is the funniest it's shit ever because photograph. you have two supposed alpha males and it looks extremely gay um not to sound homophobic but like these are these are folks who would never want to be perceived to be like effeminate or gay and this photo is the gayest shit i've seen um <laughs> and like I saw people joking about how there should be like a Brazzers or like a Sean Cody logo in like the corner because uh, it looks like the thumbnail for a gay porn video. And it's fucking hilarious just because when you know about them and you know the context that these are like incel alpha male uh, bullshitters, it makes it that much funnier. It, I don't know like what to search for, but I just keep seeing it on Twitter and it's hilarious every time I see it. Yeah, it's a great photo. I've seen that photo. It's a Vosh thumbnail. Now somebody says Roller Dragon says. He kind of looked like he kind of looked like a CVS Prime Voldemort. Like that's what I know. <laughs> like the more I look at him, like 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 knock off, knock knock off, sorcerer's stone Voldemort too. Like Voldemort at his, at his worst, like on the back of Professor Quirrell head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, and this is this dude is so thin skinned too. So he threatened Ethan Klein with a cease and desist because Ethan Klein was talking about the alleged human trafficking that he was being accused of. And there was already ample evidence before he was actually arrested, but like he actually sent the cease and desist to Ethan Klein. And I I don't know if he's like one of these free speech absolutists, but it wouldn't surprise me. But you can tell that this dude, he's so insecure. He has so many insecurities. And the only people who don't see through that are like really young boys, like adolescents, like young virgins who don't have any friends who are lonely. Um, but everyone else can see through him. Is he's incredibly transparent. He has low yeah. self esteem. He has a low IQ. He's corny. He has no talent whatsoever. Uh, evidenced by not just like what he says in his videos, but his music videos themselves. I want to circle back to that <laughs> when you're done. Mm-hmm. Is it possible mm-hmm. his fans like just they like the character? Like they know he's, I don't know, not it's, real. It's that, but they like. But the, it's the, also the, yeah. Like the, it's the also he has basically Hustler <laughs> University also. So they think that there's like this financial ties with him where they can make money from him. And I don't know what Hustler University is. He was debating Hassan and Hassan challenged him. Like, is this an MLM? Like, what exactly is this? So I think that they not only look to him as like a role model and they think that he's cool or something or their perception of somebody who's cool and gets late all the time. But I also think that they believe that he can help them get rich in a way. So he's kind of taken advantage of them to my understanding. Although I don't want to speak like out of turn because again, I learned about him like a week or so. Well, I shouldn't say that like a couple of months ago, but like this week is when I really like did my research and um, I wish I didn't. <laughs> I wish my I understanding is that a lot of what he, what he sells is sort of like, well, I, I guess part is like just basic self-help shit. And then the other part is, um, uh, I don't know if this is accurate. Uh, this is what I've heard. Uh, buying basically like 
buying a lot of an item and just selling it for more than what then like doing like what Walmart does, mm. I guess. <laughs> just like mm. buying a lot of shit online and then selling selling it because you bought it in bulk, sell it at, you know, a higher cost and then you know, make money that way. I guess people on eBay do that shit. Like it's it seems like a really basic just money making scheme. Um and that's what he I don't know. Last I heard, he has like a lot of people that subscribe to him that that get this, that want this knowledge. <laughs> mm. And he charges too, doesn't he? Like he charges a lot for. I think so. Yeah. His like advice or whatever, like his Hustler University. Um, if, if people want to be Kong shells, you have to just let them be Kong shells. Like at the end of the day, that's just, <laughs> that's just what it is. At the end of the day, it's them. Yeah. When they want. They want. They want to feed into that. It could blow them. But you know, in the Bahamas, there's a thing we say is basically eat up yourself, right? Like you only eating up yourself. Like you, that's you only gonna harm you. And at, at the end of the day, men like that, right? They're, like your whole aim, even though all you're doing is pandering to other insecure men, that's all you're doing. That's into your entire base. That is the bubble that you're in. The end of the day, your entire objective is to get bitches, and bitches you have none. You see what I'm saying? Like you see no one, no one amongst you. <laughs> like no. That he claims he does they, though. <laughs> right, but you notice how he's being charged with a litany of crimes of someone who is trying to force bitches. Yeah. Trying to keep them in the saying? house, exactly. Right? That mm-hmm. doesn't, right? Right? Somebody being charged with a litany of kidnapping bitches, trafficking bitches, assaulting bitches, just obviously. You see what I'm saying? It's a, the actual, what the truth is, what the truth is, the life they live in, and which is what we're going to find, That which is what makes it dangerous, obviously, by the way. You know, the mm-hmm. kind of mentality and the kind of sentiments that he's fostering, because all jokes aside, what he's doing is endangering women. That's, that's oh, what yeah. he's doing. Yeah, that's what he, that's what he's doing because all this anger, all this fest, all this pent up. Look at how upset. Like when you think about it, the the level of pr- production he did because he unprovoked, he chose, he made an executive decision, a business, and in his mind, he like let me go. I'm gonna go in. I'm going to, um, you know, tweet at this at this girl because I want to get attention. I want to get engagement because he pictured it going differently. And then when a 19 year old happen, beats you in a ratio, you spend a day figuring me get the right robe. Make make sure y'all get the pizza. Please get the lighting. Make sure the cameraman, if you stand right here, could you get me my best daddy cigar? Hand that to me and pose me right here. And let me tell y'all how it's the bots. It's the bots. It was the bots, bro. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, he was retweeting all the copium. He was like, it was the bots. It was a bot farm. Like, and I, I, you know, Elon Musk, and they have to stop. They have to stop doing that. Like, that's really embarrassing because even if you thought in your heart it is. You don't never say it's the bots when all your stupid shit you saying getting all these likes, right? Like we all we clearly everybody hates you, Elon Musk. But any tweet he puts out gets all hundred thousand, all these da 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 da. You never think it's the bots then, but the minute they get ratioed, it's the bots. How do you know? Is there a special tweet notification you get that said, "Ooh, bots, <laughs> bots OD in right now"? Like especially when you, you own the platform, like you can't <laughs> you can't <laughs> complain about bots when you said you would get rid of the bots that apparently are only there when. There's a response in a poll you don't like. Like, it's just so, it's so blatant. I don't know how they even have have the guts to, like, put something so, so telling out there. Like, they're telling on themselves with these fucking tweets. Like, it's just, it's, but I think it's like, I don't know. They have that, that base of support that doesn't give a shit, that likes them because they're fucking assholes. And that's what they live for, is appealing to the lowest common denominator and the, as long as those people are there and they're getting attention, they're satisfied. Yeah. No, yeah, no, it's absurd. These people, they're, they're very deeply embarrassing. But at the end of the day, they, they know. That's why it's an echo chamber. The loudest Elon Musk fans, all the trolls, all this, these kinds of people, the Andrew Tate people are really right. You see you see them in the droves on the internet behind accounts that they can't even claim and put their name on. And this. At the end of the day, they, they know. They are aware on some on some larger conscious level that what they are saying and espousing is not consistent with what, you know, the average person in society would consider a general way for you to like think and believe and go about your day because they're not giving it up like that. You're not having the kind of things which you're seeing from the trolls and the people that support these people viciously online. Do you, has anybody attacked you recently in real life for, for (laughs) not being a big fan of Elon? Even when people like, oh, they don't realize they hate him or they don't hate him or something. Has anybody... Are you knowing people just going out in, in droves ready to fight you about Elon Musk or Andrew Tate? And no, no, 
<laughs> no, because even if they wanted to, <laughs> they, they know that's not an okay way to act. <laughs> they know that's not a popular opinion. That's why they do these things. That's why their base has the ability to look like bonds. That's what upsets them so much, right? Is like, that's why the, that's why the right hates Twitter. Like, that's the deep passion they hate about Twitter, I think, in general. Because in a lot of the other, other social medias, what they have, or even with their experiences on Twitter, their, their support never looks real. Like, even on YouTube mm-hmm. or places where you know, like, oh, it's all right. It looks like bonds. Says you never see real. How often do you see real people, real faces, real people willing to claim the kind of shit? Because that's what a real extremist are. As much as they try to paint it as though the left and right are equivalent extremes or something, that's not the case. Because why the left got their face and their name on it? You know exactly what the mm-hmm. fuck you talk about with the left, but y'all are just a bunch of anonymous trolls and quiet things. Stuff because y'all know with the real radical opinion, you can't keep your job and have. You can't just be at the PTA meeting. You can't just be in the community shit. Because people don't want to be around that kind of bigotry in actuality. Most most of the country ain't with the shits like that as much as they would like to believe and pretend it to be. But I think that's what you what you what you really see with them online, and that's why I think that's why they get upset because like on Twitter. You can see the left has like, oh, you know, the left has all this, you know, support and this and all these people and all these people espousing this and intellectuals and people with credentials. And you could see who this people is and you know this. So the support feels real. It's the reason why, you know, people will they'll be so upset, even though if you go on anything, if you think of like the the shows I've been on are like rising, they hate me on YouTube by 100, 100 percent, 100 percent of the comments, 100 percent of the hate me. And they still be like feverishly mad that on Twitter it's all, you know, I'm getting love because because the love looks real on Twitter because you can see real people, real professionals, real people you respect. But you know there's a bunch of damn people who can't claim this shit in real life. A bunch of trolls, a bunch of bots. That's what they really are upset about because Twitter and the internet and stuff exposes exposes that. That's what it is. Yeah, it's th- embarrassment. Those other platforms too are, are largely siloed, right? Like like YouTube channels are, it's the community within the those comments. Like Whereas yep. Twitter, because it's all, it's 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 the most like egalitarian style social media platform there is in, in terms of everybody is there you're all going to see each other's posts you can interact with each other you can see responses both from you know left and right so it, there's a lot more engagement there and as you said that showcase is out in the real world in terms of people are actually like the the majority of people aren't pieces of shit based on what what we've seen who gets ratio that kind of thing right. like even it, if it's if, not a vast majority i just want to i don't want to be too generous yeah yeah sure not a vast majority <laughs> <laughs> I would say vast majority. <laughs> I say it's like forty nine and fifty one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's still enough to like ratio, yeah. uh, you know, Andrew Tate as opposed to Greta yeah. Thunberg being ratioed. So like it's yeah. it's w- when there's an asshole out there, they they get exposed on Twitter. But they can yeah. be in their own communities on Facebook. The algorithm on Facebook is terrible. On Facebook, mm-hmm. on on YouTube, they can be in their own place, but they can't hide on Twitter. Yeah, Instagram comments are are are. are Accessible, accessible as well. <laughs> yes, very much so. That's why they, that's the smoke. That's why they really don't like Twitter because that's where that's where all the people who like to read and write be. <laughs> like you know what I mean? <laughs> all the people are like, "Woo, that that thing you just said." coincidence that I just read 15 books on it. It'd be a shame if I I wrote a whole thread right now debunking that bullshit you said. <laughs> That's why they don't like it. Well, the playing field is truly level on Twitter. And yeah. you can't say that about every other platform. Like, it's you really are equal. Like, celebrities get to see the people who talk shit about them in real time. Rich people get yeah. to see that. So, you know, it breaks that whole illusion that they're just universally uh, loved. But one thing that you said, uh, Olayami, is um just say Olay and make your life easy, Mike. I don't know why you're just stressing yourself out. Just just say Olay. <laughs> Go ahead, <for> yourself. <laughs> well, it, it's not that difficult, so that's why it's uh, but, it's but irritating no, to me. I, I, I keep fucking it up. I, I know, I know, I keep fucking it up. Um, but um, no, one thing that you said um about how that's why we put our names on it compared yeah. to like the right. Um, it made me think of Chaya Raichik of Libs of TikTok, who unveiled her face on Tucker Carlson's program. And like within an hour or so, Chad Loader had identified her as being at the January 6th insurrection. <laughs> and like this is immediately after she revealed her face. And there's a whole that? article that he broke down the evidence for. So the ring that she wore on her fourth finger on her left hand on Tucker, she wore it at the Capitol insurrection. Um, there's so m- so this is why they can't like show their faces, why they have to be anonymous, because I mean, when they uh, reveal themselves, you, you know, nobody wants to be around that. And what I love is that 
during the Tucker Carlson interview, she said that prior to her libs of TikTok activism, where she bragged about getting like a dozen teachers fired, um, she said that she wasn't a political person. She never really followed politics, but yet she was at the January 6th insurrection, allegedly. I mean, it's not confirmed beyond a shadow of a doubt, but the evidence is pretty persuasive. Ayo, ayo, whatever they say she did, she did that shit. I gave her. She did that shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, no, Their whole no. conversation was mad. Like I, I saw bits and pieces, and like here, th- this is what I don't understand either. H- how are they think? How are they going to win with their argument? Their argument being, or at least her argument being, that all gay people are predators, and they're all it's it's gone too far, or whatever. That like they're arguing that people that are within the LGBTQ community are predators bad people how do you win with that argument in what is going to be the year 2023 (laughs) like how do you win over they didn't they just lose the midterms by focusing so much on anti-trans uh propaganda like how how do you double down on this and think you're going to win Uh, unless the point isn't to win it's just to like i don't know exactly it's a bang bang i mean this is the fundamental difference between democrats and republicans or the right, let's just say the right. Mm. They don't give a fuck about what the rest of us talking about and what the larger society wants was in the better. They don't give a fuck about nothing like that. Like, it in it for bigotry or e- whatever you think about evil. They just be rebranding evil to you. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yes, you know why they're going to continue to to try and push homophobia? Because they hate. They're homophobic. They have been. They have never stopped pushing homophobia. That has been their agenda. They've just continued mm-hmm. to find new ways, which is why when they realize, okay, we can't actually. The rhetoric, you know, there's a. There, the world has shifted. Media has allowed for more of this. People are more exposed. The tides have turned in what is social, um, social popular opinion. So then, on oh, sorry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so then. Lord, I didn't let the man in. Hold on, they literally fit the cut off. Okay, so then what they start doing is they try they start trying to prevent you from having access to other kinds of information that changes people people's opinion. That's what they do, and then they try to find when they win. That's why they start banning books. That's why they start using these accounts. Let's let's you know switch the tides on this. Let's make y'all hate this. Let's deny all your access to these kinds of information. Let's prevent teachers from exposing you to a different kind of world. Let's do that. And when we can't, you know, when we feel like that's not foolproof, uh, 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 foolproof, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Supreme Court and we're going to get these people and we're just going to get them to say fuck with y'all. We don't give a f- we don't get the majority of the country polled and they like it. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention gerrymandering as well. Like steal steal elections through gerrymandering. Like Exactly. 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 Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, one thing that was interesting to me about her interview is she said like a bunch of ridiculous things like LGBTQ plus people are in a cult and they're evil. But mm-hmm. one thing that she said was very revealing. She said that uh, they're trying to recruit people because what they're selling is alluring. This is like I'm paraphrasing. And so like she just inadvertently outed herself. Yeah, kind of and telling herself she that. Said that. <laughs> yeah, people pulled up tweets that she made towards Taylor Lorenz. And I don't want to date you. Like now after watching that interview and seeing the evidence that people have presented on Twitter, um, it's very clear that Chaya Rychik is a six on the Kinsey scale. Like she is a lesbian. And that's why she's so fixated on it. Because like I don't. I just don't understand how people can fixate on other people. Like some of these bigots like Chaya Raichik and Matt Walsh, they think about homosexuality more than me. And I'm literally married to a man. Like, I just don't get how it occupies your brain that much. So there's got to be something else going on there. And that's not to say that like people can't just be bigoted and every single bigot is also, you know, this closeted homosexual. But in the case of Chaya Raichik, I think that she essentially let it be known that she's dealing with something internally. And, uh, I don't and, have the best gaydar, but I, I'm confident that she's probably a lesbian. And like in 10 years, she's going to do an about face and say she's sorry. This is her wife. And she's trying to atone for the things that she's done. She opened up an LGBTQ plus youth center. Save a clip of this and come back to it in like 10 years. Mark my know, words. No, I listen. I, I completely believe you because that's very much so a thing. Like y'all, y'all know Lil Boosie? Y'all I know. know Lil, I've yeah. heard that name. Dang, okay. Yes. Look, uh, finally, I can introduce you all to black people y'all didn't know about. <laughs> I know a little problem. boozy. That, that don't want to know and are just like, well, okay, Mike's here, but David, I got you. <laughs> um, <laughs> responsible for Wipe Me Down. That is his biggest apple, you know? Wipe Me Down. Okay. So anyway, 
Lil Boosie makes it his business. Like every time Lil Nas X breathes, like Lil Nas mm-hmm. X cannot walk a fucking step. If he think Lil Nas X crack a smile, that motherfucker is online screaming. He is doing a Vlad interview. But in, in one of those, like he's constant, 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 constant attacking Lil Nas X. I mean, all the time. But in one interview, he's like, he's, scre- he's, he's on a rant and he's saying that Lil Nas X there is not right because there are all these young boys struggling or trying to be straight, trying to be st- trying, trying. Oh my God. Straight. You can't give it away any more than that. And, I, and it, 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 it's just absurd the way people just slide by confessions. Like you mm-hmm. said, I'm, saying, I'm like, you, why don't you like, and that's the thing in life very often. That's just because I think the reason why it's not even just, oh, that, you know, because because they're, you know, bigots or they're homophobic, that it means it's no very often in life, though, the people that people, you know, they hate on or they just arbitrarily dislike or they go after and they just stalk them. The thing they usually resent is some quality in that per- in that person that resonates with something in them and how they are going about dealing with it. That's usually it. That's it's a, it's a larger projection. And that's just just about anything. Most things, you know, so. In the same way it translates here, they are struggling and battling with their own internal shit and they cannot fucking stand uh, to see other people not live in the same, not impose the same glass ceiling on themselves, not, you know, put themselves in the closet, not feel confined by these um, societal expectations and these gender norms. And so, you know what it makes them? A fucking hater. A hater. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. They need to update the Ten Commandments because I swear you're going to hell for being a hater. I know it in my, I know it in my heart. <laughs> I know, I know it in my heart. You're going to hell for being a hater. Like it's not in the Bible, but you're going to hell for being a hater. Like well, uh, you know what it is. Don't covet your neighbor, hating ass bitches like us. Especially if you have like a, a platform and you can impact other people and impact culture. Absolutely, like you're you're a bad person if you're someone like lives a TikTok or you know little boozy doing this yeah. too. Like people that that actively are encouraging hate of others because of who they are. A, a, and clearly, like, uh, I think a lot of the times they don't even really realize it. It's a, it's they have um, they probably grown up in households that were very bigoted, very you know anti-gay. So they never felt that like, like like they could even like think of the idea of being that person. But internally, they are and they're struggling with it. Whether they realize it or not, they're struggling with it. And they assume that other little boys, uh, other boys are also having issues trying to be straight. And it's like maybe but only because they're in households like you were are, are in <laughs> grew up with all this bigoted around you all this bigotry around and, you and boozy mm-hmm. is a pickle like boozy paid looking up for the specifics but boozy paid basically for some strippers to like rape his like teenage son for like a birthday like i've sex with a you know jesus mm-hmm, like yeah Good like oh, proudly told the interview yeah like oh, i'm gonna go make him a man he's a he's a sicko Ew. That, yeah, that shows like a deep seated fear of like, I, I better start this early and like make him do this now before he, you know, questions his sexuality like I do. Like that's that's, again, projection. Like it's it's and it's sick. And, and we'll people like Stephen Crowder, Stephen Crowder, who dresses up as a girl, all, like he, he looks for every opportunity possible <laughs> to dress up like a woman, and he's super anti trans. It's like, dude, yeah, like uh, I don't Who's know, Stephen maybe Crowder? question what you're his doing. His gender dysphoria is palpable. Yeah. Like you can who tell. <laughs> who that? Steven Crowder. He's, uh, he's another one you of have to these right wing he's, he's, uh, he's another one of the, like Ben Shapiro kind of people. Like he's just you know a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, he's probably worse than uh, Ben Shapiro, yeah, but not as bad as Matt Walsh. Like he's mid in terms of like level of just straight evilness. But there's like a bunch of photographs of him um in drag and you can tell that he's like genuinely comfortable in his own skin when he's in drag like he's posing like he's he's kind of freaking it and he's enjoying himself and like anytime there's an opportunity for him to dress in drag to like prove how gay people are predators or whatever the fuck point he's trying to make he 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 does it and you can tell he really enjoys dressing in women's clothing um so it's like some of these people they're so obvious and that it is a trope for good reason. Like a lot of people who are struggling with internal homophobia, like they project that outward so you don't suspect it. But like even myself, like as a teenager, I was like the most homophobic person imaginable, like throwing around slurs. And it was literally because I was struggling with my own sexual orientation. But as I got older, still closeted, I realized I'm a little bit too obvious. Like you, you can't, you're like, you're trying to oversell it. And that's what these folks like Steven Crowder, Lil Boozy, Chaya Raichik, they don't realize that they're overselling it. Like most people don't care this much. Like 
I, I think that the average homophobe is probably just like, ugh. But like when you go above and beyond to demonize, to do stochastic terrorism, you like you just give away the game at that point. And how many of these like there, there's actually a website that's keeping track. I think it's gayhomophobe.com that chronicles all the gay preachers, really big like Anita Bryant types who were either running gay conversion therapy clinics or were preaching hate that came out and did an about face and said, I'm so sorry for what I did. I'm so sorry for conversion therapy. And like, how many of these folks are gonna do that? Although I've got to say, like when it comes to individuals like Steven Crowder, we may never see an about face from him just because there's money to be made there. Same with Chaya Rychik. But if she truly has a conscience, which I don't believe she does, then in 10 years, we will see the about face. We'll meet her wife. Um, and, and you can tell, like this woman, it's sad that she actually does have an opportunity to be successful in right-wing media because seeing her in person and not just reading the tweets, she's not only just inarticulate, she's very inarticulate, she's like very boring. And like, she's corny as fuck. Like one moment stood out to me just because it like was so banal. She's, she was talking about Taylor Lorenz, who she's obsessed with Taylor Lorenz, by the way, and claims that Taylor Lorenz is obsessed with her. But she said, oh yeah, Taylor Lorenz, who I call Tay-Tay, and, uh, or no, who who also known as Tay-Tay. And Tucker Carlson said, well, who calls her that? And she's like, well, I do. <laughs> like, it was so original. It's like, how is that original? Her name is Taylor and you call her Tay-Tay and that's like some kind of a fucking own. Like, it's like, I, I just, I don't understand. Like, these people are not creative at all. They're so corny. Um, but yeah, that, that stood out to me just because it was such an L for her to reveal her face because, I mean, you can't really cash in on the grift if you're going to remain anonymous. Like if you want to be the news anchor, you've got to show your face, but to be exposed like that as being at the January 6th insurrection, oh, it's, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Like these people are fucking, um, losers. And I don't know if you all have been following this story to kind of segue into a different thing. So, um, I kind of want to play a quick game of Christmas trivia with you all. I'm going to read two tweets, Christmas or post Christmas trivia, New Year's trivia now. Um, So I I saved the tweet on my phone because I wanted to share this with you guys. I feel like you'll be able to guess who this is. Same. uh, This is two different tweets from the same person. Okay. So 9-11 claimed my mother's life. So I'm blocking. So I don't ever have to read this again. So this is a response to someone else about 9-11. Another tweet, December 23rd this year. Marks five years I lost my best friend and mentor. Mom, you will live forever in my heart. This was posted on December uh, 21st. The other one was July 21st. Is this lion ass Santos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so his mom died of 9 11, uh, in 9 11, and also five years ago, as of the 21st, uh, 2021. Sorry. Um, and so I, I saw that, and that set me off on like this huge uh, rabbit hole where I had to find out more about this guy. This motherfucker lied about literally every aspect of his life. This is a pathological liar. Like he, he, ha- he obviously is. That he can't not lie. Like, like white people, <laughs> white people it's crazy. can do anything, and it's so up- <laughs> like people like they they dispute white privilege when shit like this exists. Like that's what I think when I'm watching like Inventing Anna and the Tinder Swindler. Like. Do you fucking think mm. anybody lets me tell them anything unverified? <laughs> like, like that's, it's, 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 it's absurd. Like, yo, like, whiteness will let you, you could lie about every fucking thing. Like, at that point, you just lying for shits and gigs. Like, you just, like, you just, like, you just trying it out. Like, oh, you He's just, just fucking like, with people. He has to be at home, like, yo, I, I wonder if they're gonna let me get this shit off. Oh, they let me get this shit off. <laughs> yeah, it's like a rush or something. It's like the yeah. I wonder if I can I, win an election lying all this this much. And it's like, yes, you can. <laughs> I honestly, yeah. I can't even take it on because like I blame I blame whoever whoever seen whoever saw him. Like, cause I never seen him. He never come. I've never seen. I've never heard his name. Same. I've never seen nothing. I know nothing. Like, I will not be held responsible for why this wasn't discovered. I didn't know if I if I had seen the video that I seen of that man talking, I'd have been like. Y'all fucking with me. Y'all fucking with me. <laughs> this is a sketch comedy because ain't no fucking way. My man, I saw, I was actually legitimately flabbergasted. Like, I, that's what I tweeted. I am flabbergasted. I was at a loss for words. I couldn't expound. I seen tweets from the man being like, he don't just, first of all, he doesn't just pretend that, <laughs> that he is like the member of different communities. No, he prepares 
he pretends that he is a member of the uh, historical tragic event <laughs> that, that happened in each one. My man was like, I, I, you know what it, you know what it is to say that, she, like, he can't even say, I said a little, I'm Jew-ish. You know what mm, I mean? That's and, amazing. You know, he said his grandparents were Holocaust survivors. Your grandparents are your parents. Yeah. You can't, it, really, what? You, use a, use a, use a liar, a deceiver, a cheater, a heartbreaker, and I won't let you tell these kind of lies. What are you talking about? Then I saw a tweet and be like, I am biracial. They said, what kind of biracial? And he said, black and white. Like, one parent's black, one. <laughs> Aren't they from Brazil? Isn't isn't he like that's 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 his background? That man is an actor. You don't know where he is from. You don't know him. That is the man of many faces. You don't know that's Arya Stark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he he was speaking of Brazil. Wasn't he charged with fraud or committed fraud in Brazil? Like he to say that he lied about his identity. Um, that's like the biggest thing that's being, uh, like talked about right now, but he also lied about where he went to college. There's no records of the college he went to. He said he worked at Goldman Sachs. He didn't work at Goldman Sachs. Now there's suspicion about whether or not he's really even gay because he, he, he got, got divorced like three years ago. If I say right. Walmart, they check it. Like, like you hear the kind of like, like he's not, he's not going small with these lies. You know, he going big, like he going mm -hmm. big, like going big like you realize that no one made a fucking call not one call nobody asked for a reference letter an email um a, a, a proof they didn't ask for a picture a resume a cover letter like just be lone lies no nothing there's bro i could not tell i could not if i tweeted right now and was like i work at walmart on the corner such and such and da 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 da, da by morning they'd be like a lie me is a liar we've been trying to tell y'all <laughs> this lying bitch she never even that bitch be a target she never even been to walmart like they wouldn't they would know, but this man, he's successful. If you to lie about everything, like at that point, you gotta say, fuck him. Like it ain't even about him. We gotta talk about what kind of society, like, come on with these institutions and these structures really are that that's what I keep saying. These things are not prestigious because they're truly about like that they're high quality or talent or who's getting through the door, son. It'd be about it's white people schmoozing and talking shit, talking the right shit. My man just was like, well, I'm gonna talk your game. He just, he went in there, but nothing but the gift of gab. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna go in there with, with whiteness, the dream, <laughs> gab, son. And he fucking did it, yo. You gotta, you know, honestly, like, now they gotta understand. They gotta get him the fuck up out of there. They do, they do. But as a, com like the comedic, the comedic genius in my school, <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Yo, that's fucking, yo, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Like, you realize when you think about it, Suits is fucking crazy, right? Because my boy is out here pretending to be a lawyer. Oh, da, da, da. That's one job. Yo, this man, this man faked his whole life. He took, he said, fuck Don Draper. Fuck old boy from Suits. None of y'all got shit on me. I'm like, he's in, con bro, they, they gotta put him in Congress. He lied his way to fucking Congress, son. Like, y'all don't, you realize that? We still don't, we don't know what he is ethnically yet. We have no idea where the man is from. <laughs> he, is, he, is a, he is a mystery. He is a, he is a comic book villain, okay? You have no idea because he's from everywhere. <laughs> like, he is the man of, of many identity, okay? Just, that's, that's honestly, that's, that's comedy, son. That's, that's comedy. That's fucked up. It is funny. Honestly, the Jews need to get him together. They need to, he needs to get, he needs to be dealt with. They need to deal with him. They need to take him out back because that's <laughs> no, that's fucking that, all jokes aside. That's fucking crazy. Like, yeah, you're not just gonna pretend to be Jewish to get he's, a back. He's like, Jew dash I S H. <laughs> 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 like that was his defense. That's insane. That, there's also probably a criticism here of like media, right? Like how mm -hmm. isn't it? I don't know. At least local media's job to do. I I shouldn't blame. I mean, they're underfunded, right? Or they're they're completely. They're, there's no local media anymore. But it's. It's the job of state media, whoever, to look at these races, look at these candidates. You didn't do one Google search on this guy? <laughs> like, it's just, it's crazy that he got away with all of this shit. And it didn't, no one looked it up at, until he won. Yeah. It's And weird. it's not the first time he ran for Congress. He ran in 2020 also. And so last time when he ran, he was like this really huge, to my understanding, like MAGA chud. And this time he reined it in a little bit and played up some of the liberal identity politics. And it's like, oh, I'm Jewish, I'm this, I'm gay, like just trying to do the bingo card. And he, it was all a lie. And it's it's honestly, like you were saying, like, it's kind of funny just because 
he actually fucking pulled it off. Like, it's... And we haven't even touched all the lies. Like, there was one lie about him having, like, a... Wasn't it like a, a dog shelter or something? Like, a like an animal rescue? But, oh, Jesus. Like a charity? But, it, but then it, it turned out that they had only had, like, one one event and no one knows where the money went or, or the, the money wasn't sent to the right place. Like there was just, this guy's just lived like lie after lie after lie. He's gone from, one. gone from one fake ass career to, to the next. It, it's, He's it's wild. Like if this were a Netflix show about a scammer, this would be fucking hilarious. This would be a fucking, this would, <laughs> the ratings would be out of fucking control. They got some, like, he's fucking hilarious. The man is, Big jokes. Like, It'd be too unrealistic. It'd be like, oh, this show's not realistic enough. It's just too fake. This this would never happen in real life. <laughs> he would never win this no, race. Yeah. <laughs> no, hundred percent. It's giving a Shonda Rhimes show. Yeah. <laughs> Shonda Rhimes. They need to. They need the picture to do it right now. Cause this shit right here. No. Honestly, that's what I keep. That's what I keep saying. Like honestly, that's why. If you are, if you are watching, if you are a marginalized person, if you are, if you are black, if you are a person of color, if you're anything else, I want you to know right now, let go of the imposter syndrome. These motherfuckers are not talented. They're not. They're mm. not. They just, they control the board. They get to choose the rules and they just decide that they're great. Their players are great. Their shit is great. It's the way all their shit is the classics, blah, blah, blah. But then you go and look at it and it's an ugly painting. Then they spend a bunch of time trying to tell you that it's gorgeous. This is the prettiest bitch you've ever seen in Mona Lisa and you know it's not. <laughs> it's shit like that. It's shit like that. Come on, look at this. Look at this. You see this? You see Anna Sorkin? You watch. You only have to watch and to know white privilege is real. It's some real, like, you just got to look at this. Look at Anna Sorkin, the um, old girl inventing Anna, the Tinder swindler. Mm. And there's another one. There's, an, there, there, there's, a, there's another scammer that really... Ooh, um, did y'all see Katie Quackenbush? No. I recognize that name. Katie Quackenbush. This white girl gone out. She was... <laughs> Katie Quackenbush was in a car, driving a car, playing her music, dad loud in the neighborhood. A homeless man was sleeping on the street. And so he said to her, like, can you turn the music down? She gets out of her car, goes and shoots the homeless man. Really like, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Got out of the car, shoot the man. God. Get back in the car, drive off. They get a girl probation. <laughs> yeah, she got off for killing a homeless man, right? Like, completely off. What the fuck? I mean, I'm not surprised, but just... White girl. Jesus Christ. Kitty Quackenbush. Yeah, shit like that. Or or old girl, um, Turtleneck. Turtleneck. What's her name? Y'all know Turtleneck. Turtleneck? <laughs> Come on. Turtleneck. There's a lot of different people that can fit that descriptor. Big eyes, blonde hair, turtleneck, white woman, fraud. I'll, I'll look this up. Turtleneck, big eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, her name is, um, hold on, man. I know somebody in the comments knows exactly who I'm talking about. White lady blonde. They getting them in Amanda C. Free played in a Hulu something. I'll look at my comments here. I'm sure some Amanda will, uh... C It is Amanda C. Free? Is that? No, no, Amanda C. Free played her in a, in a... Oh, she played her? In a... Um... Her name is, um, Lord. I can't believe y'all do better. Y'all are supposed to know Elizabeth that. Holmes? Yes, yes. Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't get that myself. Yeah, yeah. More proof. More proof. More proof. It's really, it's really insane, bro. Like I'm telling you, it's a. It, the more that's what I realized too. The 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 more my own career and life expands, and the more I enter more rooms and stuff, the more I realize how white people just be exchanging money and connections just amongst each other. <laughs> just, just be, just be doing shit. Just oh, this person, that person, more many more things. Da, da, da. Don't be, don't be about especially being especially talented. Not at all. <laughs> not a, not at all. It'd be about such and such that they know such and such. <laughs> you met such and such. Oh, such and such. Money, money, money. <laughs> Apply for this so we could get you some money. Ooh, was you thinking about having some money? <laughs> money <laughs> and that's what you be looking at that's why i don't even be making no sense like just oh i didn't show nobody a business plan they didn't check nothing they didn't verify i can't get a phone from verizon right now without them checking it out and then anna sorkin and people are out here getting entire buildings with million dollar mortgages and all kind of stuff and rob it's all connections like that's capitalism mm -hmm. it's just it's all connections it's, it's who you know and then mm -hmm. that's what i'm saying if you're that's born in the right saying. you know the right family the, the right connections then you're set Right. But otherwise, you get super lucky. Like I don't know if you're that. What's her name? The that we were just talking about that that scammer that that f lied her way to the top. Like if if you're lucky enough to meet the right people while you're doing that, then you also have the chance. <laughs> but but for the but for most people, it's all just like super. It's all just luck. It's it's who you're. And that, and who you're born into. Was crazy. That was really wild to me though. Like at first, like 
That y'all did y'all watch it? Did y'all watch it? I now? didn't see yeah, it yeah. yet. No. Yes, Mike, you you all should have oh, yourself a good TV. Good. Did you watch it's the Tinder Swindler? Okay. No. Tinder Swindler or Swindler, I didn't. I've heard of that though. Um, a okay. podcast that I listened to talked about it, but the Inventing I, Anna one is that on Hulu? I need it. It's important if you're a fucking Inventing Anna. I think it's the Netflix. Netflix. Okay, I'll check it out. I don't want to see y'all next week if y'all ain't watched the Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> we have a homework assignment. Consider that your homework, because because that shit right there, that 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 was absurd. But and Inventing Anna really shocked me because Anna was smart. Like you know what I mean? Like I understand. Mm-hmm. Like we live in a life like. Like, I get it. Like, I'm like, wow, like, that's a different level. Like, white privilege, white privilege really surpass. That's it's interesting to see, like, pretty privilege and white privilege battle out and seeing white privilege be able to whoop pretty privilege ass and get that out of the way because ain't no fucking reason anybody was supposed to think that gal was what they thought she was royalty or full up of bread. Like, that's. That's crazy. Nothing about nothing about that young lady. Not a picture that they showed. Nothing. Not no point in time in life was that lady given millionaire, billionaire, heiress, da 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 da. And like, how does nobody notice she broke? How do you not notice she is not hasn't paid for anything? Like you saying that, like y'all noticing there's always excuse. You know, rich people who that nothing be making any sense. And I'm just like purely off of whiteness and vibes. That's that's really crazy. Com- that's a- confidence goes a long way. And then if you. It's confidence and at least faking connections. If you're able to convince someone that you know mm. a certain someone and certain people with that confidence, then you can pull it off. But you got to be a sociopath, right? Like, I, I don't know. How. <laughs> yeah. I can't. No. I, I'm not a good liar. Like, it's it, this that lifestyle would not work for me. <laughs> you know, she, she, you know, speaking of since, since you've seen that, David, were you somebody I feel like um, I didn't understand why people weren't on the side of. Her friend, um, the girl, the girl who the only charge that Anna didn't didn't uh, wasn't convicted of, which was um, defrauding the girl of like the bunch of money she took from that when she you know tricked her into paying for the resort when they were away. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I really didn't. I, I really didn't understand why the tides were so against on that. People were like, oh, well, she only did this. She turned on Anna after, you know, after this money situation and blah, blah, blah. Anna had been paying for all these things this entire time. And you have to pay for this thing one time. And I'm like, OK, OK, but. In real life, if if one person, if a person is as far as you know, they are a they are an heiress. That's what they present. They are an heiress. They are the epitome of the one percent, right? And they go and have regular friends, regular broke friends, and they take them places and stuff like that because that 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 is the trade off. You're my friend. I want your company. You can never afford to be here in these places, so I am paying for all all of the things. I'm like, how is CB all like? Oh yeah. Haha, and was swinging that whole time, and now she has to pay for this. So big deal. I'm like, are y'all fucking crazy? Are you out of your fucking mind? You ever been a regular broke person and do some shit with your richer friend because your rich friend tell you they're gonna cover for you? Could you imagine getting caught with the rich person bill you can't, you don't fucking have like like thousands and thousands of dollars when you're a regular person without that kind of money? Like I'm like, I'm not usually someone to like go out of my way to to rally for you know white girls' plight, but I was like. <laughs> no, yeah, no. She was totally justified in in, in yeah. Out of fucking work credit card. I'm like, are you serious? Like, I would, I if somebody cost me four thousand, I think it was like four thousand, right? Minimum, like, no, I think it was more than that. Actually, well, no, let me know the exact figure before because I want, I want to know the level of drama I'm about to give to the monologue. I'm about to. Well, that's, <laughs> like, see, how much money? <laughs> how much money she robbed a friend? Like, it was just much- yeah. The I I think what bothered me about that about that whole situation was. Uh, at least the way they were presenting it was how did they not catch on sooner? Because it was just it was amazing to me how far she was able to take it, and how long they were defending her until finally, like it, it, like how how <laughs> how much more can you defend this woman after what she did to all of you? Like that's that's what oh. I was kind of st- stunned by. But first of all, being I'm so sorry four thousand Z. Four thousand was something that was that was that was the magnet that was the max my small little brain could could fathom somebody costing me. I'm so sorry because I had her fucked up. That girl cost on that trip sixty two thousand dollars on credit. Jesus, sixty two thousand dollars of debt. I'm telling you right now, I'd have killed that bitch. Like fuck, like <laughs> you did. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all think the worst thing like. If I'm 
a white woman and I'm not me. I don't, I'm a white woman. I am a white man, had in bitch with the, those principles. And you steal $62,000. First of all, you're lucky if the least I fucking do is hem you up at the prosecutor's office. <laughs> you're lucky. You're lucky if that's it. <laughs> well, if you want the money back, you got, you got to go that route. Otherwise, you're not getting the money back. Oh, <laughs> I would get her back in blood. Are you serious? Like, I, I, you want to get paid, though, right? <laughs> you got to get the money back. That's no, not going to solve the problem. She have no money. She doesn't have any money. No, the minute. I, well, I know. I, yeah, but I, legally is the only way to try to get it back. Of the sixty-two thousand dollars, right? Right. So I'm not getting the money back. So either way, you don't fucked up. I'm, I, I've suffered an incredible loss here. You have to lose your life. <laughs> like your life. Are you fucking sixty-two thousand fucking dollars, nigga? That's an education. That's that is right? fucking crazy. I wanted a trip for you, and now I have student loan debt. I would kill her. That's so fucking. <laughs> I could not believe in the the part. The only thing that I found unfucking believable about the entire movie was that the one friend, like I get, I, I get it to two degrees. Like, like I get it on one hand, what I want to say, and not on the other hand. But her one friend rallying for her was black, and that kind of blew my motherfucking mind. Like on one hand, I get it because, like me personally, I wouldn't care if my friend was a scammer. If I turned out my best friend turned out to be a bitch that was scamming loan people, like. That's my bitch. I'm not telling her. I don't, I, like, I don't, she ain't scared me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I wouldn't care. So I get that. I can understand why her best friend would be black. I understand that. But it was the best friend being black and poor and telling this girl, so what? She stole six, she cost you $62,000. Yeah. Be her boy. Are you? That's what bothered me. That's why I couldn't believe it was like, a real life story because I don't know how anybody could could be defending her at the end. Like, how could you possibly still be defend? Like, what? It, it didn't make that part didn't make any I mean, sense I would to me at all. Her if she ain't steal my money. Like, if she's my friend and she didn't scam me because I don't personally care. Like, whatever. Like, I'm I'm a defense attorney. I'm not gonna sit up and pretend like I'd be morally outraged by things. Like, you rob some rich people. <laughs> <laughs> do you well, think? Yeah, but she wasn't think? rich, right? Like her friend wasn't rich. Like her, her, fr- like that one. That's what I'm saying. That's the one person. That's the one person who was everybody else. All the other people she 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 robbed was ri- you know rich rich. rich yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like moderate, mm-hmm. regular, regular rich, not heiress people. The yeah. kind of she could never be in that world. That's why I think that girl. I think that girl, just as an individual, is entitled to feel however she wants. I personally, I could see like friends still being behind that one. Who cares? I. But you know what? I, I'm a different breed because I probably my friends probably could call me and tell me they didn't all kind of crazy. I, I, I don't I like they could tell me they murdered somebody before they could tell me they voted Republican. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's that's what my <laughs> that's what my <laughs> like, I swear, like, like just for that, the record, not me. If some of if, if someone close to me was like, hey, I did this serious thing, I'd be like, you better fucking start running because I'm calling the cops. <laughs> really? That's hilarious. Really? I've had, I've, I've had this hypothetical with, if with they're that. truly in the wrong yeah i'm not fuck that you can, i i i can choose if i can choose to not be a shitty person then you can choose to not be a shitty person fuck that so i'm gonna tell my friend they're a shit like here's the thing i'm gonna tell my friend that they're fucked up right like i'm always and i'm not a mince word person i'm gonna tell you you fucked up you wrong you this that's not actually true just the other day on christmas my friend called my on christmas my friend asked me to text a number for us. I was like, oh, some guy blocked her. <laughs> and then, like, see if it goes through. And I'm like, she deserved that shit. All right, I know. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you, you did that. Yeah, I know. I know. You definitely do. Wrong. You, it's you. You the drama. Like, I'll tell you when you're wrong. But I'm not going to, like, me, as me personally being, like, morally outraged by it or being whatever. Like, I don't, but, you know, maybe it's because I'm a defense attorney. Because I don't think if my best friend, I would feel stressed out that my friend now has to deal. We have to deal with how you hide this, how we cover this up, never talk about this forever. You know what I mean? Like, I feel stressed out that my friend now has to deal with, like, hiding a murder. I'd be like, damn, I hate that for them. Like, this is really... You know what I mean? Like, that's like such a looming thing. Like, I, I would hate that. Like, wow, that's that's so much that back in therapy to stress it out. That's going to give you anxiety. You never, you know, you never feel good. <laughs> but as far as me, like, nah. I'm very, like, I come from the... My Grammy's like that. If you if you, if you would call my Grammy and told her, like, Alimi just went and murdered 10 people, my Grammy would be like, well, what did they do to my grandbaby? Because I know she in this trip... <laughs> 
It had to be fucking with her. They was fucking with Meg Ryan, baby. Hey, no, I know that's what it is. But what if that's- it turns? What if it turns out that person just like a, a, an actual like a, they're a terrible person. They're they're living a lie. You didn't realize it. They had you. They're fit. You know, they they were fooling you the whole time as well. And now it's are all come out. A lie or are they multidimensional? Because <laughs> multidimensional. Oh, Hand me out. Like no, muscle is- personality disorder? No, no, no. Yeah, this is, real, <laughs> this is real tea. We, you know, we live in a world where we, where we, where we act, right? As though like the people who do crimes, like or people who've killed people, are like somewhere on the outskirts and can't be found, and they're special. They're these special, you know. Whoa, 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 everybody's a dumber, and everybody's a this, and they some bad, insidious, fucked up, different character and stuff. And that's really not the tea. Like if you watch The Wire, I'm sure you love Avon and da 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 da. You see they cool people, you see they friend, they they murdering people, they doing all kind of crazy things. People do all kind of fucked up shit and be regular people and still that person's friend, still a good uncle, still a good this, da da da, all those things. And I and I recognize, I'm sure some people in the comments like, Alani is a real crazy bitch, but I'm a hell of a defense attorney, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, it exists. I'm like, it's it's regular. I don't mean like my friend, I know my friend, I know my friend as a person. I like, I like, I like that person. I like their company. I like their this. And I find out they killed somebody. That's fucked up. Like, depending on what the circumstances of, uh, you know, whether or not they did that. But I wouldn't suddenly feel like, go, 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 go. <laughs> There's been a demon hiding. They've been hiding their true self from me. No. Well, obviously, it depends on the situation. Like, if it's self-defense or something, it's a little different situation. But, but it's like, you know, if it's, like what? Like what's the what's the scenario? What's the what's the so you what you saying is if Dexter if you was if you was Dex if you was Dab Dexter was going to jail. That's what you saying. It, it well. It, oh! I'm just thinking because like well <laughs> which which, which season of Dexter are we talking about? Is it before he started killing ba- like good people? <laughs> like, <laughs> like there was a time where Dexter really just killed the shittiest people ever. <laughs> You see? Did you see what I said? Now we're back to my original. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> well, tell me. Well, tell me how you felt. What did they do? <laughs> like, like, like how, how did that come about? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I need a list of the names of who he's killing before I make my decision on whether or not to <laughs> not necessarily support it, but just like. Don't you also have to be worried, back. though, that that this is going to like come back on you? Like, if you knew the whole time, you're not getting away free. Like, you're you're fucked as well. You're going down with them. Like, if you kept us a secret. Isn't there like? Is, I'm not, no. Aren't if you like liable in some way because you didn't say anything about it? No. It's if the police now if the police come and ask you, they act like that's a different thing. If somehow you get intimated in this and they come to come talk to you about this, but you don't ain't no constitutional duty to snitch. You don't got no legal duty to like. You know what I mean? If if now it's different. And now if they if they want to talk to you, if the police are talking to you or you are doing something to help them cover it up or something, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Know, then you become an accessory after the fact. But if it's just they told you about it. You can know that. You know what I mean? It's not like in the same way that like there's attorney client privilege, meaning you can't be forced, you know what I mean, to testify to something or whatever. You could get subpoenaed or something like that. If the police knew that becomes a different kind of thing. And then if they if they if they know or the prosecutors know and they come to try to get you to testify against it and you refuse or something, now you in contempt. Now you, you know, you open yourself to all these other things, accessory, obstruction of governmental administration. But just as a general mm-hmm. rule, there's no like if somebody if your friend call you right now and say, Oh, I kill such and such, you don't it's not now you in trouble, you in accessory because you go to sleep after that like you're good like you're good so you know I, I, and also i wouldn't be able to sleep i'd be like this is fucked up if some if, really? if my friend told me they killed somebody i'm not fucking falling asleep <laughs> like, I, yeah, I probably i'd would, be I freaking would probably the fuck out. with you more on this david <laughs> just because i i mean i think that you can make the case that like violence maybe is justified if you're going to save lives. But then when you open the door to like vigilante justice, the only problem is that like people's interpretations of good and evil is subjective. So like a Chaya Rychik, for example, could say killing a gay person saves lives because you stop like, uh, you know, gay kids from being recruited. So it's, it's tough. Like the Deb and Dexter uh, analogy is, is kind of tough because he was killing just bad people. So, like, in the Dexter seasons one through three, I'd be like, okay, maybe I won't, like, turn you in. But, like, when he starts killing people in season six and seven, when they, like, if I'm remembering correctly, when they are starting to find out about him, so he has to kill them to, like, keep quiet, then I'd be like... But that's by my, but that's quite exactly really what my point is, right? Like we make these like hardline bright rules, but in actuality, it's a case by case thing, mm-hmm. and you'd be willing to hear like logic that you agree with. Because at the end of the day, 
Dexter ain't nothing more but a self-righteous fucking serial killer. He ain't a, how the mm. fuck he killing bad people? No, what Dexter's doing, Dexter, think about Dexter's activity. Dexter's a fucking murderer. <laughs> That's what he does. He has mm-hmm. an urge. He wants to fucking kill. He is probably just as dangerous as this and in city. Raheem, I done told you to stop doing that shit in this house. Um, <laughs> like, Dexter, and then he spends his time looking at other be- bad people who are if you think about it, if you just go and based on what our general bright line rule metrics of bad are always less bad than Dexter for the most part. If you're going by that, right? Dexter, mm. like maybe you, Dexter's a hater is what the fuck he is. He's a hater. He, he is a murderous hater. But you know, we say, you know, you understand that. Man, oh, well, these are bad people, but by whose standard? If you're going by what our standard for bad person is, Dexter, a goddamn predator going around murdering, lying, doing all kinds of things, putting everybody in danger. You know, you know, you know, bad. You know, bad. And like that. That's just be had by those, but if we go by our general, I don't think this, but this is my, you know what I'm saying? It, it depends. Let me ask y'all this. Y'all think everybody, y'all think y'all have never been in the company of murderers? Like someone who's killed somebody by the actual, like you wouldn't, you don't oh, think I anybody? Have. I don't think I have. David, you don't think you have? No. David, you I mean, maybe like, I don't know. When I'm in a crowd at a, I don't know, like in Toronto, maybe in that crowd somewhere, <laughs> but, like, I really respect- but not like in, you know, not like at a party or, you know, not at a gathering. I love that everybody in your life, as far as decided that you were not the type of person they confess serious crimes to, and they were correct. Like that's really good discernment on their part. Like I bet they were. Not- is it normal for people to tell you they killed somebody? Like is this like a normal, is this a normal human experience you've had? <laughs> First of all, I'm a defense attorney. Like, well, uh, no, yeah, okay. Obviously, in your work, a little different than like. like- but it, that's the thing, right? That's it, It's not different, right? As much as we try to, you know... Well, it's different like, because it's, it's your, ju- your defense no, attorney. Like, that's... It's not different worlds. In the same way that I could sit across from somebody and they're accused of a crime, you know what I mean? And I don't, you know, I'm not judging them or I can, I can still, this is a person, I humanize them, I go through to this, I don't think they're deserving all these different things. I think they still have friends, family support, as I see them as a as a multidimensional person, you know, is this the same way kind of it translates for me. I'm like, yeah, like people, people, all the fucked up shit that's happened in the world is not just happening in, in a in a bag or a pool of who we deem as, you know, oh, they're fucked up. Like, it just happens sometimes, like, good people do fucked up shit. Like, you know, good people do fucked up things or people do dif- different things for different reasons or people have different responses that are bad. Like, you live in, when you think about it, if you live in, like, or you just think about what is, like, black, uh, like gang violence, right, in, like, poor black communities or something like that. There are all kind of crazy, you know what I mean, you do to survive and all kind of things and a horrible crime you might have done or these kinds of things. But these are not bad people. They are, they, are, they are adapting to the circumstances of the world that they live in and what they've been taught and what are certain kinds of responses and what's normalized to this. And people... You know what I mean? It's a different world, and you're gonna see, and you're gonna see like good kids or people who would have been in different circumstances. They wouldn't do this, they but they do that. You know, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But you know, I guess this is mm. why I, I have the 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 lane that I'm in. Because my friends definitely could call me and somebody murdered somebody. I would be like. I mean, I guess like if if some it, it depends on the circumstance and whether or not like you can compartmentalize that. I could if it like was a justifiable situation. Like I, I do agree. Like. People are complex. Situations can be complex. Like for me, like when you ask the question, Alay, of have you been in the company of somebody who's killed people? Like I have multiple family members who have been in the military, who served in wars. So Mm -hmm. without question, they were put in predicaments where they did fucked up shit. And it's it's hard to think about that because at the same time, it's like they were they chose to be in that predicament to join the military. But at the same time, the broader system put them in this situation to where they were pitted against other people who were just like them, poor with no opportunities. And they were killing, being, you know, being shot at and stuff like that. So the situations do change though. I I guess for me, it just really depends. Like my default position is like to be against the immoral thing. And like murder is just like viewed as one of the most immoral things imaginable. But like there are situations to where if like, you know, uh, uh, somebody who was raped killed their rapist. It's like, okay, I feel like that's, you know, ethically, I don't think that that's that bad. You know, just, yeah. I guess it's, I, I guess that there's more, I there's more you, nuance to it. I think you can condemn, like, like, I don't want, you know, I think you can, I think you have an obligation. And this is, this is a conversation I feel like I have a lot, especially in terms of like restorative justice and abolition, all these different kinds of things. Um, I think you have to recognize that like people will always have community or if they don't, it's a worse situation, right? In the sense, like people, like 
men, if we live in a, let's take just like violence against women, right? Or domestic violence or things like that, which is far, far more prevalent than you would ever think it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Than what is women discuss in their general day to day or what men even realize how much men even bother are cognizant of is sexual coercion, all the different things that they do that are bad, right? But you know, when you, when you condemn, you can, you know, if, if a friend calls me and my friend, my friend, my friend tells me something that they've done that is wrong or, or that I believe is wrong, right. They're telling me something and I decide that's wrong. I'm going to take my friend to task, right? Like, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you like all the ways in which that is fucked up. That's this, you need to do this. This is actually that blah, 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 blah. Like I just actually had a conversation with my, one of my friends the other day telling him like the age difference between him and a girl is not appropriate. Like to me, like she, I think she's maybe like 20 and he's like 32 and I'm just like, like, no, 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 time out. And nobody needs to give me, we don't need to get in a whole dissertation. Y'all could spare me. Nobody message me <laughs> why y'all think it's fine. But I'm telling him why I don't. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always going to tell you mm. what I think. I'm going to I'm gonna take you to task. That's better than to me, a world where it's like, okay, you told me this thing. I fucking disagree with this. I think this is a horrible thing. And now I don't know you anymore. Like, because what has that done to prevent the, Like, the, the horrible thing has happened. It's, it's happened. And either I contend with this human being, this person was, if this person was already my friend, I'm not, you're not being, I'm not being asked to take up a new person. Like some person I didn't care about and already have an existing thing with, but it was already my a person I fuck with, right? This is already my friend or my something like this, whatever I've signed up with for their friendship. I'm here to tell you, oh, that's real fucked up. Let me tell you why that's wrong. That's this. Now it's a different world in which if you tell me, oh, nah, that's what I'm, this is who I am. I do fucked up shit. I'm going to keep doing this. That's a, that's a whole different conversation. But I feel like the initial, like, yeah, it's not like, oh, you call me and you tell me you a murderer. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, sometimes people got to die. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's not, that's not what I'm going to say. <laughs> we are going to have a, we're going to have a long, long, long process of why you ain't supposed to be out there fucking murdering people. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it isn't going to, it is going to individually, like, I, I'm not going to be like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't deal with, you know, the knowledge that this person did this thing and be friends with them. And I guess that's just because I think that people, like, human beings are, are capable of a lot of evolution and they're also capable of a lot of bad shit. You know what I mean? A lot of bad shit, a lot of, a lot of mistakes and not everything is going to be, sometimes shit is bad. The thing is just bad. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it, and, and it's not justifiable, but justifiable, but it doesn't mean that this person is still inherently bad or a hundred percent bad. Sometimes you just have to contend that I did something real fucking bad. This is bad. That's what it's going to be. And I have to figure out how to like, you know, move differently, do better in the future. But I think sometimes we make a mistake when we have um, this address of like, oh, unless it's, you know, justified or something like that, then, you know, I condemn you and don't know you because at the end of the day, those people still exist. We haven't made them, we haven't deleted them. We don't get to delete these bad people that have done these things that we condemn. They still exist. So isn't it better for us as the people that were already, you already signed up to be friends with that person. You already know that person. You're already in community with them. Why you don't help that person not be a piece of shit, right? And just be like, ah, piece of shit let me ostracize you and you go find a bunch of other pieces of shit to frolic with and now you got fucking andrew tate <laughs> i think it's all context so i like I, I i completely agree with what you're saying in terms of uh we should err towards rehabilitation and and but oftentimes you have to think about how much power you really have over this person's life like if you really have no influence mm -hmm. then it's just you know this I, like the, my mind went to like if this if I'm with, if I am friends with someone who's willing to kill somebody and they told me that, am I going to be next? Cause they, they're now worried that I'm going to do something mm -hmm. about this. Like, that, so I'm like, I have to like not, almost stop. Not am I, gonna be next. I have to get to them before they get to me now. It's kind of where my mind's going. Like, <laughs> this is not, I can't trust this person now. They can't trust me. It's just, uh, but yeah, no, obviously context I think is, um, I, matters I with, in, in terms of explaining what someone did and why they did it. When I think of like an example of like, to me, like, okay, you did a bad thing that like, is disproportionate. Let me give you a perfect example, like a, a hypothetical. Is like a guy is a, he's he's a he's a, he has an anger issue. He's just an angry dude. He's an angry drunk. He's at a bar. He beats the brakes off. You know what I mean? And he kills somebody. He's not so drunk that he's not cognizant or whatever. He's just angry, loses his temper. You know what I mean? And he does it right, wrong, really, really, really fucked up. Guy did not deserve it. Completely disproportionate. Wrong. There's nothing you could say. There's nothing that justifies that. But the actual underlying root cause here is you have an anger problem. It's not this person is necessary. And like one problem that has a spectrum can lead, you know what I mean, to this terrible, to this terrible outcome, if not addressed, if not unchecked, you know what I mean? It isn't this special, you know, this special badge you exist. You have a problem and this is what you are capable of when that is, when that is unchecked. 
but so yeah, this this fucked up terrible thing you did, but now you gotta we gotta we gotta figure out how let's address where that anger comes from. It's not that this is some yeah, special no, absolutely. Monster. But uh, yeah, uh, I also think like not facing any any repercussions is going to solve the problem. Like if you just keep beating people and killing them and getting away with it, like you're not getting help. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like mm -hmm. uh, until you are, you know, you have to be faced with with needing to solve the problem. Um, Except. Except when you look at it like here's but here's the thing I, I here's the thing I guess maybe it's because we live in American society where America does not police actual crime and harm and social ill by what is actually present right they just don't they they're just not it's like today I walk if I walk forty minutes I lie if I walk thirty minutes straight one of my house I live in like Little Caribbean and it's super super black right completely black but if you watch if you walk thirty minutes. It's literally completely a Jewish, an entirely Jewish community. And they look entirely different, right? And this walk like where it is, police, police all in my neighborhood, neighbor, NYPD not to be found somewhere else. And it's not, it doesn't make where you put a magnifying glass where you look and it's not, it doesn't mean harm and all these different things are any less present in these communities than they are in the communities that are being over police. But so the people that really get away with things, all this harm, like what is our, our system and this punishment, this idea that, oh, these people are, you know, doing this and doing this and getting away with it. Anybody that's being recycled through the criminal system and getting away with a damn thing. You know what I mean? They're not just doing, doing something to get away. Those are exactly the people who are, you know, be, that's not that. It's just that our criminal system does not prevent, it literally causes, it causes um, and recidivism for a number of different reasons, right? Rap sheet, all these different things, put you into different kind of circumstances to make sure these kind of things um, continue to happen. But you will never, in neighborhoods, white people are never being policed that way. The people that are really getting away with shit are the people that were ne are never policed in these ways in the first place. If you look at, you know, if you look at justice as criminal conviction and all these different things. So I don't think it's the, um, the situation, a situation, I think, it starts from before that. Like, I don't think we could start it at, oh, you know, these they're doing these things and getting away with it and getting away with it because the people that really get away with it never make contact with the criminal system. They're not being policed in that way. They are being, things are being covered up. The, some of the most of, I will tell you, as someone who has heard and had a, a lot of confessions in my day, even beyond just the thousands some people I've represented, just people I know, some of the most unsightly, like the worst kind of fucked up crime shit I've ever heard is from like, my white male classmates in law school who get drunk and cry their soul out to me and tell me some some story, you know what I mean? That and perfect example. I'ma just tell the story. Fuck him. I'm not on a person like nobody gonna know. My one all year, I'm out with the white people, my white law school classmates. There's this white guy that his dad was like somebody important in like Philadelphia or something. He tells me the story. He has drunk. And he's, he chooses the one black person to come talk to. He's drunk. We're sitting on the side of the street. And he tells me how he's, he's been tortured. He's so guilty because over the Christmas break, he was playing his brothers. His little brothers were playing basketball. His brothers, they were all white, were playing basketball on a basketball court with some black guys. And they lose and they get into it. He's like the white the, He's He admits, he says to me, his brothers, you know, started the fight and they're fighting with the guys. But then he gets a call and he comes and he takes the black guy's head and slams his head through the windshield of the car. Like slams his head through the windshield of the car. And then his daddy and them call the police and get the black boys arrested. And and he's Jesus crying to me about it, about how he's been so plagued by the guilt of this all semester. And I say to him, well, how about you go help those those guys? You want to do something about those charges you got them? Or, you know, tell, or tell you know, da-da-da, say this one. He's like, ah, any, any, anything but that. You know, and that's I know a lot of fucking stories like that. The people who really get away with shit are the people who are never policed and seen that way. It's not the people that are being cycled in through throughout the criminal system. They're not getting away with a motherfucking thing. See, what they are being doing, they do it is receiving all the exacerbation of all the issues they went in the criminal system with, and that's why you're seeing recidivism. But the people out here killing, raping, sexually assaulting, and all that shit, they be the Matt Gates of the world, the Andrew Tates of the world, the all these people yeah. that just be right there in our face, fucking doing it. The the I, the the Epstein's the this da 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 where they find one or two of them they might try to make an example out of her but maybe a millisecond but the rest of them continue to operate not just in plain sight but as the as the as the most advantaged the most privileged class you know with, with the most connections with the most money and all those doors so that's what I would say that's see my... th that's who I'm talking about though when I'm talking about like yeah. if a friend is is did some sh serious shit and like like did like that for example um 
Yeah, they would normally get away with it, and they shouldn't. Yeah. And I'm going to report them <laughs> because they should not get away with this shit. Like, and then you're gonna, so, be, and then you, and then you're gonna be writing you a, a whole op-ed. You're gonna be writing you an essay about the time you realize how powerful white privilege is when you call the police on your on your boy, and it should happen to him. <laughs> and now, and now you can't get it. Now, not a black, but they blackballing you on something in your private life. Because that's all that would happen. Because see, that's. That's what I think it depends where you're. No, I, I think here, in if case, in the scenario who I'm talking about, or or these kinds of people and stuff like that, yeah. In this scenario, I told you, he knows the police. You know what I mean? He the police. The police aren't fundamentally. It's not that they're not aware of what his role was or anything in that. It's that they made an executive decision. Oh yeah, lock up the black guy. You know, and that's what his. That's what his dad knows. That's what the police knows. That's what they know. You know, they're not. They're not keeping a secret. It's not like the police were under the impression uh, that these black guys were. Under than I guess more than what the police impression of black guys are, you know what I'm. But the police aren't unaware. Like, oh yeah, he did this to him. His head, him, his head in the windshield. He didn't put his his own head in the windshield, right? Like that's not. Even if we were just going yeah. by a regular world, if it were reversed, even if you wanted to make a self defense argument, you would have to make it. You know what I mean? You would still have. You'd be arrested. You would be charged. But I think in a lot of these scenarios, what you find is the criminal system does not respond to these kind of actors in the same way. They don't. Like even when they do get you know arrested, I know lots of white guys that have had DUIs or they got, you know, arrested at a bar fight or they did something. The experience they have with the criminal system after that is not what, you know, the average the normal experience for black and brown people is in the criminal system. And that actually sometimes is is harmful because now they go in thinking, oh, I have experienced the criminal system and it's like this. It's fair. I got to I think um what's her name? Kanye West's ex-girlfriend, Julia Julia Fox, Julia somebody Julie did a Fox, video. Yeah. She was on Z Way and she talked about that. About um, she was always getting arrested and going to, you know, um, central booking, and they would just, you know, let her out and be like, "Oh, it's fine or whatever." And so she said there was this um, young black girl, like a teenage black girl, there. It was her first time being arrested for something petty, and she was like, "Oh, girl, you're it's gonna be fine. They're just gonna, oh, it's da 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 da." And instead, they were sending her to Rikers on like thousands of dollars bail. And so that is what I'm saying. Like you, you think it's insidious. Like you think it's a lot more insidious than it is. Like something you really have to parse out. But a dead ass is like that. When I when I arraign white people, their cases are gone. Like they're gone almost at arraignments. Like I don't. I've never had to represent a white person beyond two criminal two, two court appearances. The case is going to be resolved. It just doesn't. It just always is like that. And I've never seen it. Not. I've never seen it not like that. Even in the most like court is a place where if my black or brown client opens their mouth to speak, the judge snaps at them to stop talking in the court offices, speak to your lawyer through me. But I once, the worst position I've ever seen a white client in where he actually was, you know, they remanded him and they let him, when he came out, he pled his case to the judge's fucking self and the judge let him out. They wouldn't let my black mm. client speak. But they're moved, they were more moved by what this white boy, because this white man could say next to me than they care to hear it from my black ass. You see what I'm saying? So mm. I, I it just it, you would you'd be surprised to find out the system will not respond. It will not give the same moral outrage that it does. And when you think about it, why would it? The the people that that do the law enforcement are murderers. You know what I mean? Like the, mm -hmm. the police are all around the country killing people. They have some of the highest rates of domestic violence and, and sexual assault. So murder, sexual assault, rape, the worst things. What we have, you know, our bright line rules we know happens in rampant, rampant among the people that we place in law enforcement. Why would we think, you know, and they police certain populations, why would we think when you tell them about those kinds of things happening in their populations, they would respond in the same way? Yeah, that's insane. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, to me, to take this back to a personal context, I think for me, like just making a, a decision on whether or not I would still continue to be friends with somebody, I think it, they would have to do something bad enough to sufficiently change the way that I perceive their character. Because I don't think yeah. that any of us here would be like friends with an inherently bad person from the get from the get go. Like none of us would be friends with Andrew Tate in his current form, like whether or not we befriend, befriended like a more, you know, docile version, like yeah. that's a different story. But like, um, I, I think it just, it comes down, what was I gonna say? It comes down to how bad of a thing that they did and whether or not I think that that changes the way that I view them. Like yeah. if somebody told me that all of a sudden they're a huge Republican Trump supporter, that's not necessarily a crime, obviously, oh, but yeah. I still don't think I can oh, be person. friends with them. You know what I mean? Like I would have to disassociate myself with them just because there's so many other implications from that. So like in terms of like 
I guess who I would be friends with and whether or not I would turn them in or not. Like that would be my take is like, well, okay, this is, you're not who I thought that you were. But of course, like context and nuance matters. See, like it, if, that's if so somebody, different for me because in that situation, I would be like, oh, I can, I can convince them otherwise. I can, uh, I can mm. educate them. They'll change, which, which has happened to me. There, I had a friend who, mm. who enjoyed Ben Shapiro videos. Uh, he enjoyed the, the anti-feminist ones. Like he thought it was funny that Ben Shapiro would dunk on these feminists. Um, and, I slowly educated him over a couple of years and he is much different now. Yeah. <laughs> so, like the, you, I can, it's, it's about, I guess it's, it's like when it comes to politics, I feel like it's, it's usually people that are just uninformed and they are willing to change if they have the right information. At least that's so in I my experience. Um, I guess if they can be rehabilitated, about, then yeah. I'd agree, but. So I guess it's less about what we moral judgments. I, th- I guess we're not making moral judgments, any of us. I think it's more about what we have time and energy for. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, think, like, I think it's about whether or not, like, what reactions, because you know what I mean? Because you, you're right, right? Like, I've had friends that I've, like, changed or moved over time. Mm-hmm. And that. So it's about what, you know, you feel like dealing with or what creates a conundrum for you. I guess in my case, like, for me, I, I'm created a labor. If you, if you are come to me, well, if you're a big, I just can't, I can't deal with it. I'm a person, like, I, I struggle to deal with with my friends. I like and I think are you know aren't problematic or bigoted, but they just ain't informed mm-hmm. about certain things. And I wanna I wanna die. <laughs> um, like so, I just can't I just can't be bothered. And I also just don't think it, I could be my best self because I'm gonna be a bitch. Like I'm just, gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna be over it and sick of your stupid shit. Like and I just so that's not why. Whereas I guess in the case of where it's just them criming, <laughs> I'm like oh okay that's. That's your professor's story you done told me. You know what I mean? Like, I guess that's because it's not like my problem as much as your viewpoints is going to be my problem because that's going to conflict with how I'm talking and going about my daily life because of what I do. Um, And I just don't have the time. I don't have the temper. I don't have the desire to put in the work which is so much different than what is my natural temperament. So maybe that's just what it is. Maybe it's just, maybe because my defense attorney nature is the hair. Because I've I always, you know, I done seen the charges and read the sheet and I've already come in and like, oh, I'm rocking with you. So maybe it's like, like because my brain is so like that. That's why I was like, oh yeah, was, yeah, you didn't know what you did. All right, back to like, back to like <laughs> legal advice. Like, yo, I wish I could tell y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all about it when we are not streaming. It would be they would love it. I'm gonna tell you about a call I like, actually I got from a friend recently that like excited you. And I was like, it was the first time. I can't tell y'all what, but I normally when my friends call me and they have like a legal question. Um, it's always something that I feel like is like, oh yeah, that's not nothing. Da, 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 da. This time I was like. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like they called me, and I was I I immediately you don't understand I got stressed because I was like oh you oh I can't and like in my mind I'm like oh this oh this is kind of I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was like oh I don't think this is small friend like, I don't think oh this no is <laughs> so maybe maybe it's just like that because it's a job thing I think that I think that's all it is like energy because. Yeah, I think they, I think yeah. they put the energy into our, our the republic. I here. feel like it would be stressful knowing that any anyone could like call you and you know dump some shit on you that you would you don't want to hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know that's what I mean? Life. That is, I'm that person. Yeah, like, I, I, I feel bad for you because of that. Like that's 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 real shit. You have to hear from people because they 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 want your advice on something, and like that's, that's you're really working like basically. That's like you're you're on the job that's all the time. Much. <laughs> because yeah, you're, anyone like, can you never you. get a break from it. Yeah. No, never. I'm everybody's life coach. Like I am a hundred percent. All I do, I listen to stories and dole out good advice all day long. That's all I do. And get ignored, you know. And everybody just just do their own. They just they don't follow the advice and then come back to me to talk about how they should have done what I said been said. And I'm I'm a very but also too, I appreciate my friends who know like I'm an I told you so ass friend. Like I, I want you to know I'm you remember when I told you fucking that? <laughs> like, I'm that friend. <laughs> my friend Amber does not call me. She would not call me for a year. To, like, she'll call me once a year when she's ready to hear my mouth. Like, But she will not call me other than that. Like, ah, oh, okay, this bitch going to talk a lot of shit. Let me get it out in one sitting. And let me tell you, and I'm just like, ma'am, ma'am, why are we in the middle of these love and hip-hop ass storylines? And she's like, <laughs> like that is, that's me. All my friends are like, yes, a lie of me. Mm-hmm. You're right. You did, you did tell me I did my best. <laughs> like... Everybody needs the friend like that who will call them on their bullshit, though. If you don't have a friend like that in your life, I think it shows. 
Yeah. Where you you need somebody who's going to be real with you, who's going to explain to you, yeah, you did fuck up and not just validate you because like everyone's perfectly valid and whatnot. But sometimes somebody needs to tell you, actually, what you did was kind of fucked up. You're kind of in the wrong here, because if you don't have that, then you just kind of like devolve into this like narcissistic person with a victim complex. And it's toxic. I feel yeah. like I'm that person for myself. Uh, okay. mm. <laughs> I don't want to sound like egocentric or anything, but I, I, I double, I question everything that I do. I am always hard on myself. Uh, if I, if I, I don't know, get angry or like do something that I, I regret doing, I regret it like five minutes later. I apologize. Like it's, I am, and it's, it's stressful because <laughs> I've had a like lifelong serious anxiety. I went to therapy for anxiety. I took ayahuasca for anxiety. Like I, I've had serious issues with anxiety, depression. And I think part of it is because I am always in my own head and it's mm. very hard to escape my own head. And that's, so I don't need a friend like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it wouldn't hurt, but at the same time, it's like, I, I think I'm good on that front. That's hilarious. Well, my friends are already very getting good looking, you. but they tell me about my ass. They will, they will, they will. And <laughs> for like my friends, like do mirror back for me. They let me know, like, you are a loud mouth Leo bitch. Like, we love it. Like, that, they uplift me, but they let me know, like, oh yeah, girl. Like, <laughs> my best friend is like, she'd be like, she'd just look at me and be like, you ain't got no inside voice? No. <laughs> 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 Like, or the other day I called my best friend, I was uh, complaining, I'm complaining about my daddy. And I was like, um, my daddy asked me if I did something. And I was like, yeah, daddy, I, I told you that. And he was like, you didn't tell me that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask you if I knew the information. And I was like, and my, and my best friend was like, I don't know why you complain about your daddy. And you're exactly like fucking that. <laughs> she was like, tell you things a thousand times. You're like, I never heard that in my life. And I was like, huh, precisely you walk a wreck. I had an ex-boyfriend call me stubborn once. And I call my my friends like, oh, you believe he called me that? And they were like, yes. Are you fucking uh, not self aware? Like, yes. <laughs> I, don't believe, I don't believe he said that. Like my friends, my friends be telling me about myself all all the time. Like literally, like, ma'am, you don't think that was a lot? And I'd be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like I suppose. <laughs> I, I, sh I should course correct. <laughs> it's good to have honest people in your life, you know. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. I think that that for you, David, it works that you have that mechanism of like self-awareness um, and same like you all like if if you don't have that, then I do think you need a friend like that. Yeah, because some people there's so many people that just lack self-awareness and it's whenever they're challenged, like you can really see it. Like the obvious example is like these these people like Elon Musk, like who are surrounded by yes men who just yeah. affirm every single dumb idea that they have. And then when they finally get challenged or made fun of, like you can see how confused they are, like the, you know, the Elon Musk getting booed and whatnot. Um, I mean, it's that's more of like a insulated billionaire problem. But just like generally speaking, like if you're not self-aware, you need somebody to like be real with you. I think that I, that's like yeah. very important. I think that is very difficult. Like, at, you know, I guess I've, I'm. My friend uh, gave me some really good advice the other day. Like it was a he like he was he was chastising me. Like it was a little bit of a reprimand, but it was mostly like this is really constructive. Um, but I understand feeling like I think especially the, like with the internet, I, I get how it is to to become so like I feel like I have a fast trigger. Like always did in general, you know. Let alone and I don't like people. You know, I don't. I've never like being mischaracterized, and I don't too much like people telling me what to do. Um, which I think, you know, is a lot of that in the internet and people talking shit about you. And also I think in my case, I always feel like I'm incredibly like, I'm like, I'm with me 24 or seven, right? Like I spend all my time <laughs> in my mind trying to understand me, trying to reflect, trying to do this, trying to work on me as a person, trying to this. So when people who don't fucking know me from anywhere come and say, you know, all these things and insulting you this, da, 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 my, I'm like, I want to fucking let loose and let the chopper sing on everybody. But I'm like, you know, something I've been on my own. I'm like, I'm trying to check and police on my, and it, it is a process um, before anybody starts doing it, you know, telling me I need to um, is like, okay, I'm trying not to like, just let these people's negativity sit, or I don't have to acknowledge it or whatever, whatever it is. Um, Cause I just think as a person, you naturally, just as a human being, you hone in on negativity. You just like, you could get mm -hmm. a thousand compliments, but it's just like, who those people have, they had me fucked up. And my, you know, I was having this conversation with my friend the other day who's an actor. Um, and he was like, 
oh, you know, you get all kind of love, like majority love, just love, love, love. And I was like, you don't see all the negativity and the da 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 And we had this whole like thing. And then he called me like two days ago. And he's like, let me impart you a gift. He was like, I was watching this thing. And he's like, let me tell you something about math. He was like, the president of the free world is doing well when he has a 50% approval rating. He's like, me like, oh yeah, like that's right. 50%, 50 fucking percent. He's like, if you are like at 80, he's like, you're at 80, 70, this or whatever. I don't care how much negative do you see like you are doing well very well being like positively received like and you and you want to be wary of like the narcissism of you know just I need a hundred percent positivity or something like that so that's something mm. I'm trying to check on my own like okay let me let me not be so hot temper and I think the internet just like Twitter itself you, I think if you I think if you get I think there is a compounding effect at this point it's not about even what the individual comment says i think if you're on the internet chronically online like we are um and day after day and people are on just on your fucking neck year after year i think you just become all right i'm I'm letting loose immediately fuck this fuck this i'm over this because you see so much bullshit but what i'm trying to do is check my own self like okay let let that rock not be so you know i don't want to i don't want to be so quick to 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 chew people out that it eventually comes off or it seeps or unintentionally across the line into to arrogance or something so it's something i'm trying to be mindful of with my with my own self there so was definitely trying- a time where I, I i would like you know see negative comments and feel the need to respond and correct whatever i got to the point where i if it's like an accurate comment, then I will respond and I won't criticize. Like I'll, I'll try to be understanding, but usually it's a you know a piece of shit person. <laughs> so <laughs> what I what I what I do now is honestly I, I just block people and light yeah. and Twitter has gotten so much better. YouTube comments so much better <laughs> because once you weed out the, the the pieces of garbage that are just there to talk shit, then it, you are actually able to engage in real conversations and and yeah. you're not you're willing to almost. Um, uh, you know, listen more because the the advice you are getting aren't p- people that are out to get you or, or criticize you. Like there, I posted something about a, like a video game a couple days ago, and some some person replied, uh, "Why are you such a loser for playing game?" Like, I was like, I just blocked Jesus. them. This is like, <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I don't need this person in my life. Like, we all play yeah. video games. Shut the fuck up. Go away. I get to talk. This is my fucking Twitter page. You don't have to comment on this. But like, I don't respond. Just like block them. Whatever. They're gone. Never hear from yeah. them again. <laughs> it's just. A, it doesn't i don't need that i don't need to deal with these fucking people like it's it's no, just and that, yeah. is, that is the route i'm trying to get to the i'm trying to get to the people to the level of the people who are like oh yeah like they just leave it there like people could just you know just be hating on them just casually you know in the comments and they just oh they just fine with it they whatever i'd be like today i was proud of myself though because i saw some i saw it late i was only um I wrote my Learn Adi essay and I was looking for something so I could hyperlink to it. And then I saw this person's tweet that was like um, on my video about Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez was convicted and they were like, let me see it. They were like, to be honest, I'm disappointed in you. I saw your interview on the Young Turks and thought you repped this well, but I see that your ideology comes with conditions. And you know what? A week ago, one of one of two things would happen. I would have either blocked them outright or I'd have cursed them the fuck out and blocked them. <laughs> <laughs> moral the righteousness that people come at you with and what people try mm-hmm. to say, oh, it's just like but i responded really well i thought you know what i mean i was like or perhaps you i just answered on the merits of like you know or perhaps you don't understand you know what i when i'm saying this is that i'm gonna put out the ass and i was like oh good line me i was like oh little girls little <laughs> wins little wins look at us doing better because <laughs> i mean I be hating that stuff and i think it's because they they do have a way of coming at like i think what gets frustrating is People come at you in this way. That's like if you don't answer, they act like you're evading their, their, their you know, you're evading some mm-hmm. explanation they're looking for. Like this is a narrative that's being allowed to go. With. You ever seen people like you ever seen some a negative comment about you or something like that, and you know it has some likes on it, and it's your followers and stuff like that. And the minute you respond, those pe- those people go and unlike that person's comments. They don't want to go be, you know, like. And I and I feel like that like they do that sometimes. Like they they gravitate they, like. They act like, oh, this has been allowed to stand. This position has been allowed to stand, and we can continue and persist with this because you haven't addressed this or whatever it is. Or in my case, and I think this is something I'm trying to figure out for the new year, because I res- I think I respond, I think I engage with my followers a lot more than people in average. Like even if I don't respond mm. to everything, I click like on most 
most comments from my followers. I try to if they can say something really nice about me in the record, I try to like give them a gif, give them a something. And I think for me, because everybody knows, I see all the comments or whatever for the most part. When somebody is, is saying something negative about me and it's right there, I feel like now everybody thinks I'm pussy. <laughs> like I'm like, oh y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Because like, oh, they expect you to respond, they're, they're waiting for the response. I'm like, oh, y'all just y'all think I'm scared. I'm like, I'm not scared. I just don't want people to think I am mean. <laughs> I may bully, like, you know. But I'm just like, oh, who are you talking about? I got the- <laughs> you think I'm soft. <laughs> like- I think a lot of times, though, we assume that that other people will see that comment and think, oh, they're going to agree with that, or they're, they're pointing something out that other people are like, so, so we feel the need to respond to almost like address an issue that isn't even there because that one yeah. person pointed out. I mean, it, it, if there's like a pylon, it's a little different if there's like a lot of people saying some shit. Mm-hmm. But if it's like one comment and it's not being addressed, it, you know, most people probably aren't even looking at the replies. I mean, maybe you're different because people are waiting for your replies. <laughs> I think in my mm-hmm. case, people don't give a shit and it's just I, I, I don't even bother anymore. I don't know. Yeah, same, I used to be like where if somebody said something wrong about me or negative, like I felt kind of like I, I, I was obligated to respond because what would people think if I didn't respond or if I didn't have some witty comp, uh, you, you know, come back. But now it's to the point where it's like, I just don't give a fuck. Like they can completely fabricate this fiction about me. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's not going to change fundamentally who I am, but responding or not responding does impact like, my mental health and just like taking kind of like a social media cleanse for the past week and a half. It does wonders. Just not knowing what people are saying uh, about you or about anything. It just, it really is wonderful. And it kind of like, not that this is like a huge epiphany, but like it lets me realize once again, how toxic like social media is just because you, you, it, it, that dopamine rush when you get the likes or the instant anger you feel when somebody just like like David was saying about the video game thing, like just randomly responding, like just they love they just want to be fuckheads for no yeah. reason. And, and, just, and like, oftentimes they want that. They, they want the engagement. Like there are people out there yeah. that are they are literally just clout chasers that they, they yeah. and, and honestly, it fucking bugs me. There are certain people I'm not even going to name their names because they're fucking clout chasers, but there are people mm-hmm. that engage with these fucking assholes. And they have made them now popular. People like household names because you engage with this person who t- told you on camera that they were only in this for clout, that they're only in this to, to, to you know, get like likes or, or get their name out there. And you're still engaging yeah. with them, even though you know they're dishonest. Like, it's not mm-hmm. you, you people like we're making celebrities out of these fucking assholes. Like just if, yeah. if everyone I know it's impossible because you can't police the internet but if everyone just did not engage with people that are in it simply for clout then we would all be a lot better off <laughs> because at well, least honestly, we're dealing with people who are honestly in, in in their positions and we can expose those people who are wrong for for the shit they are saying but people that are saying shit wrong on purpose to for attention like yeah. don't give those people attention like block them get rid of them or like yeah. mute like just get them out of your feed out of your life like you don't need to yeah. engage with those people mm-hmm. yeah yeah, no, I'm at the point I make I make, you know, executive decisions um, about a lot, especially in my case, like media appearances. When I see like the other day, I got a I don't remember what it was, but somebody asked me to come talk about Rikers with some. And I look at but with some I, like a debate, like a panel or some shit. Mm. And I and I look up who the person is and I'm like, this is a fucking right wing nut job with no following, no platform, no for real. And he has literally, I was like, there's nothing for me to gain, but everything just by me engaging this nobody as a premier, mm-hmm. this will propel him to, I was like, yes. fuck no. Exactly. I literally, told them, I literally, when I said to you, I literally told them like, and I think more people, and I'm gonna say what I said, just cause, just so people have it out there that I, I very much, so this is my, um, pos- position with things like, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, like because let me see I think I, I let me find it right now nothing to gain <laughs> I, I think I literally said to them like why do y'all want me to talk to these people like, and I'm yeah, like if, if if your engagement with them is going to benefit just purely benefit them and do nothing at all for, like there's no reason like there's there's no mm-hmm. reason to engage with these arguments from people who are only going to benefit from your platform right boom yeah. they asked me they 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 said Hey, Ole, I hope you're well. We're wondering if you could join us to discuss uh, Rikers, the time, the panelists. It would be with this guy, this person. And I said, why do y'all want me to talk to this idiot? 
So I said, I'm at work with her. Crying face, and they said uh, laughing emojis. I'm sorry, we need solid pushback, and that's why we want you. I said, I honestly kind of don't care to have my presence breathe life into some relatively unknown idiot who thinks Rikers is something to be contrarian about. Like, my engaging him legit- legitimizes him and makes his dumbass thoughts heard when it otherwise wouldn't be because no one's listening to that young man. I'd rather just come and talk about Rikers when y'all want an update on what's happening rather than give this man's thoughts a sounding board for debate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> perfect. Yep. Good. Yeah. That's, That's perfect. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm at the place where I'm like, I, I, you know, before, like initially, it's like, okay, I'm trying to bring Rikers and these kind of things to the forefront of conversations, trying to get these places to talk about it in general. But I'm like, now at this point, like, I don't need, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. you want me to come talk about it or whatever to do it. To, to, and like, it's, 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 it's one thing if that person's like super well known already, they have a platform yes. and, 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 and they're spreading this garbage like, and you can engage with it. That's exactly. But to but introduce a new one. individual into this <laughs> conversation and yeah. give them energy and like, no, get the fuck right. out of here. I was like, why would I do that? I was like, just the fact alone, like the place itself that it was, it was like, y'all don't have Rikers debates. Y'all don't have Rikers discussions or panel or like segments mm-hmm. before I do that. Like never before. I The only Rikers content y'all do is from me. So why do you already have a Rikers segment plan now with this guy. Cause that's the real plan. The plan is to put this guy on and it's come get me to come do it. And y'all think I'm a conk, but I am not a conk. <laughs> like, you know, I, will, I will not be joining. I'm not going to fucking do that. Why would I do that? I'm like, that's absurd. And so I like, I'm at the place now trying to be more mindful. Like, okay, wait a second. Let's, mm-hmm. let's not create a person. Let's not put some eyes on this person. Cause very often you're correct. That is, that is what they're trying to do. They're trying to feed off you to create a platform. And cause that's what pe- people are in it for. They're in it for that. That's why it's a, the grift, right? They just want mm-hmm. they, however which way they can, whichever way they could squeeze themselves into a room and into a dollar and into a platform, they're trying to do it. And often they feed on our outrage or us making the mistake of talking to them. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm at the place. I'm like, let me ignore People unless unless they already you know like Andrew Tate like that okay yeah no. yeah he's already out there exactly yeah, yeah. he's already out there yeah. like I, I don't have any problem like whatever fuck it but somebody new oh no 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 no, no. yeah Nothing. yeah they, they crave any amount of attention that they can get for you which is why I've stopped blocking a lot of people and just mute them because even a block acknowledges that you you saw their existence you had to click the three dots and block them you acknowledge that they are there. But just like even giving them anything. So a couple of months ago, there was this new grifter that debated a leftist. I think David was referring to this individual earlier. Um, And I reacted to it for like five minutes on my Twitch stream. And I'm like, okay, I can't handle this. This is stupid. And just that five minute Twitch stream, which my Twitch streams, they they get like sub 100 viewer counts. Like Mm -hmm. I basically do them to interact with the audience and then I'll get clips out of them for my YouTube channel. But that person made a video about my like five minutes just, oh, this is stupid. Like, humanist report smears me or some dumb shit like that. It's like, oh, yeah, and, they're and fucking like, waiting for that shit. As it, even if it's insignificant, it doesn't even matter how stupid or minimal your interaction is, that gives them life. Like, they no, live for the cloud. So, the best way to deal with these people is just completely pretend like they don't exist. I've literally, the funny thing, the one thing I will say, people, like, that's the one thing I am good at is when they make the videos talking about, because one thing about me, I, I don't consume negative stuff about me. That's what people have to do. You shouldn't. Them. I will blur, no, I, I, that's because I will blur my eyes. I literally do not like i'm mad i want to fight i don't like you saying <laughs> shit about me i'm not like i'm not one of those people who's gonna like sit here and watch you talking shit about me. nope not at all i don't even i won't watch my i won't watch a show i'm on if i think y'all talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> so if i see a motherfucker like every time like especially when i do rising and these like obscure right when people go to go tag me and some shit or try to get me like feel like bait me into talking about it i'm like <laughs> sorry bitch <laughs> won't, won't be you're out of your fucking mind you think i'm watching that you think you're talking shit about me and i'm watching it yeah, I'm, I'm the exact same way. I've never seen a single video where they're like, like attacking me. Like, why am I gonna fucking click on that and watch that? Like, yeah. people have sent me videos yeah. like you should watch. I'm not gonna fucking watch this video. Like, why would you send this to me? I don't give a fuck. I'm not <laughs> why do people do that? I'm not listening to because they think you Stanford care enough to watch talk it. Talk bad like... about me because they want you. <sighs> yo, people are so yo. People are sick. You know, I ever talk about this. Uh, t- no, they they like people kind of feed off like 
seeing how like like that. That's what I like like IG Live where they could see celebrity like know that to say negative things there because they could see the celebrity have to know it's there. Like mm-hmm. they want you to know. They want you to know about the negativity about you so fucking bad. Even people who think it's a sickness. I'm sure there's some psychological thing or whatever name, but because even your own fans, yo, I met earlier this year. I met my friend, it was some, uh, uh, one of my friend's friends that like watched me already on Rising and stuff. And they were like, they were like, oh, well, I mean, do you read the comments? And I was like, nope, nope, I do not do that. And I'm like, oh my God, girl, cause you shouldn't. And blah, 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 oh blah. They tell me all the negative shit. And they just, they're like, as, as they're literally watching me. <laughs> they're like. That is so wrong. That's so I, fucked up. Yo, I will. Ne- Yo, I'm telling you. When I say to you, truly fucking triggered, son. Like, I, I, like, I, I, I cannot even tell you how fast it was. Like a fucking like, like, like I got. I was like, damn. I walked into being shot. Like that's so crazy because I felt like I being so careful. <laughs> like I, I've avoided all these comments and here I thought I thought I was in the safety of my friend's home and my assailant has entered and shot me at point blank range. <laughs> They're like. And like, you know this bit said, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> like that's what that's... I said. <laughs> My mom yeah. has done that to me. Like she's like texting me my like comments too. on YouTube. Is like, have you seen this? I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to see this. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> my, <laughs> she my stopped doing it now. But like, there's a time where she would send me like, 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 did you get this right? This person says you got this wrong. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, yes, I got it right. I'm looking at the oh, comment. They're wrong. Not... Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> my mom sent me. She didn't send me the link, but she sent me the name of somebody who posted a video about me because she was trying to find my videos and she stumbled upon a video that was like talking shit about me or whatever. And she's like, did you hear what this guy said about you? He said this. And it was like some allegation that I took Soros money or something stupid like that. Um, it's like, are you going to respond? Because this is a lot. It's like, mom, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. Like it, it completely makes zero difference whatsoever. Like it's like, my mommy, don't tell me about that. <laughs> my mama does that too. Absolutely. And it's because my mommy's actually a hater. Like that's the funny thing about her. <laughs> no, like, she's a, oh, she's a fucking hater. She's a top tier hater. So it's always so funny to me when she do be mad about something people said about me and, and, and then she'd be like, why would they say that? Meanwhile, she says that shit. She says that shit. Like my, <laughs> like, deep down, yo, deep down, my mommy can't stand me son from, from time. Like all this shit the internet don't like about me. My mommy can't fucking stand about me. Too. Like, like, so it's like, she want to be on my team because I'm a child and she loved me and she don't want nobody talking about me. But also, she knows I don't let her get that shit off. <laughs> so she's trying to, she can't wait to, hmm, hmm. <laughs> like, like, my mommy, listen, all this shit, you see when those people are like, oh, her fucking hair, why is her hair red? Them nails, my mommy thinks all that shit. She is at home thinking the same thing. When That's my so face, fucked up. Yeah, she's a hater. When I, when, I change, when I change my hair to black, the woman act like, oh, thank you, God. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly, I'm like, <laughs> my mommy is a hater. Like, I, I hate her. But you know what is funny enough? And it, like, and it's interesting because my daddy is technically, my daddy's Nigerian, my mommy's Bahamian. And my daddy's technically more reserved, more this, more, you know. But my daddy, my daddy don't got nothing that he, he's just like, let my child do whatever the fuck she wants. Like, it don't, he don't have nothing to say about it. You know what I discovered recently? My daddy has a Twitter. Like, you didn't know he did? Oh, really? No, he has a Twitter, bro. He has a Twitter. Yeah, he has a Twitter. And, wow. he follows, and he follows me. And he's never said one fucking word. And I'm a wild bitch. Like, you know, like, I'm on there. I'm like, like, for my daddy's purposes, my daddy don't know I really be key. Like, my dad, and he just, he finds, and he don't say nothing to me. Like, my, my daddy said to me that a woman in the bank said to him, like, oh, your daughter over there in America saying whatever she needs to watch it. And my dad was like, she can say whatever she wants. <laughs> my, my daughter, my daughter. Aww. Like, my daddy, my daddy's just like, oh, you know, the girl, my daddy's like, you know, I put the child through school. I gave her one job. I told her to be a lawyer. She did that. Leave her alone. <laughs> my daddy's like, thing. like, that's pretty much my daddy's position. But my mama, she be there secretly like, she used to do when I first started at Panda News, every time I'd send her a video, she'd say, oh, you know, I, ain't, I you know, I don't like them. You know, I don't like all that red, you know, that that's still a little hard for mommy to get over. Um, but you know, you you spoke very well. My mommy's talk my mommy talks about me like a racist. Like I'm not lying. <laughs> my mom <laughs> me like a clan member. Like my mommy be like, you know, the, the, the girl speaks, she's always been very articulate. <laughs> <laughs> But she's a she is a fucking hater. When I first started being on the news, my mommy's like, they don't vet. They just letting this girl just oh. up there. 
My mommy will call me and she's like, That's so fucked up. She is, first of all, she's like me, so she like jokes. And she doesn't care how you feel about it. She, if she's getting her joke off, she's getting her joke off. That's I, so funny. I respect Ruthless. it. She, 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 she called me and she's like, Alimi, you just going to be up there, up there just, you, Alimi, you sitting there talking to the white people. You, you can't just answer them and be like, yeah, I'm here for the niggas. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, I can't tie, did it? <laughs> I was like, I'm getting it all right, mommy. She's like, <laughs> like she's like she's like I just don't she's like boy I don't know boy you know like they must he can't handle I don't I don't know why they um but soon as somebody say something negative about me she's shaking she calling me like ready she ready to shake meanwhile she feels all that shit she be like why are they talking about your breasts and your cleavage no God. there has never been a slanderous comment on the internet about me about my boobs or cleavage or anything worse than what my mama be saying in the chat. <laughs> It's, it sounds like she's like she's worried about how other people will perceive you, even though that isn't there. Mm. So it's like she's bringing up like criticisms that she thinks people will have that that mm. she thinks takes away from your arguments, even though they don't. <laughs> so she has them. They are they're her critiques. They are they're, they're very much so her critiques. My mommy is like, you know, like. like Really? Is like, she more like traditional? Because I would kind of get those critiques from my dad. Like I have like gauges in my ears and like tattoos and he'd be kind of like, hey, you know, if God wanted holes in your ears, he would put them in your ears. Like, is it kind of that or is it just kind of like to to clown on you? No, my mom is a hater. Like, understand this. My <laughs> mommy, no, she, you know, in her spirit, like, like that's what she is. Ethnically, she's a hater. You gotta, like, <laughs> my mommy, my mommy will change her position just to hate on me. Like, she, I'm telling you, like, my, no, I'm telling you, the first, listen, the woman that, that she becomes in order to, to disagree with me is powerful. Because I'm like, you don't think this. This isn't actually even your opinion on the matter. You have turned into a hater or me, <laughs> like, my mommy, I remember it like it was yesterday, my mommy had like, it'll be her like, her children's, her daughter, her friends, daughters, and she giving them, she she telling them, I remember like it was yesterday, she said this girl out in like a bra, like a bra, and, like a, just an open sweater type thing. Not that I don't, I'm not saying that I don't do that, I obviously, if you're following me on Instagram, I do give it up, like adjacent to that, not obviously not a bra, but I, I, I am a scantily clad young lady on my, from time to time. <laughs> my mommy be, <sighs> Oh Lord, oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, all this breast. I just don't understand. Yo, over, over, over. Last month she called me a fucking exhibitionist. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh wow. Last, week, last month, yo, she called me an exhibitionist. What the fuck? Your mom is <laughs> ruthless as hell. Holy shit. It really, so it really sounds like she's just super concerned about what other people are might say about you. That she's like hating on you because she she wants you to conform to whatever she thinks is okay for you know society <laughs> let me tell you something right now if i was a buttoned up if i was if right now my hair was hair my hair was black black and straight and i was buttoned up and blah 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 all of a sudden my mommy would turn in to the most progressive <laughs> ego be free i'm telling you she just be talking shit to hate on listen okay well in that case then i have no defense of your mom <laughs> yeah, the lady is like, you gotta understand haters i'm telling you i'm really that's why i could that's why i could spot them in the wild uh, the queen hater is, is in my house okay my my mommy you don't you don't know my mommy is so good at expressing disgust like she just <laughs> like what <boy, you> <laughs> yo my mommy <laughs> One time, let me tell you how much she's a fucking hater. I was I was home for, for like a break in the bombers and one 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 time in college, I'm eating some food. <laughs> my mommy walks up to my door. Like she'll just walk up. She likes to do this. She'll just walk up to the door and look at you just and going, this time, this time, this time she looks at me, she looks at me eating, and she goes, So you're just gonna lose the battle to food? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bitch, what? <laughs> I'm not one. I'm not words there. with anybody but you. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yo, she's a hater. Okay, I'm yeah. A hater. Yeah, she. You've convinced me she's a hater. It's hard for me to not. It's take off the mom filter. It's like no, there's got to be some explanation for this. Okay, <laughs> she's got to be traditional. She's got to be just looking out for. No, she's just, okay. She's just a hater. She's That's a hater. a hater for the last. I'll give it out. She's big Joe. She is funny. Like. 
I'll, I'll give her. She do be getting her jokes off, and I do appreciate that. Like, yeah, I'm like, get your shit off mommy, but that's a hater. That's that's what it is. We that's see not... it. We see it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should we wind down? It's 11.02. Yeah, I think we should, we should wind down and do our <laughs> shout-outs and whatnot. I see and some it... people asking, though, in David's chat. Um, so, what they Blair... Say? wasn't able to make it oh yeah she w- wasn't sure how late she was going to be um so i'm assuming she'll be back next week also lance will be back next week and then um matt will be back the second week of january so this is kind of like a scaled down version it's half of the leftist mafia um but we'll be we'll be back in full force we're kind of like recovering from the holidays and and stuff like that so yeah um do you do you want to do our socials and whatnot yes Yes, you okay. go. Yeah, go first. Ole. Oh, me first? Yeah. Uh, I, put, I put it in my, my screen name this week, um, but I'm Miss O'Lurin on everything. M-S-O-L-U-R-I-N. Follow me on all this stuff. Uh, subscribe to my sub stack, Allurinati, and I'm putting out my new essay tomorrow or the day after. Oh, and I have a new Teen Vogue op-ed, and my Uvalde oh. Teen Vogue piece was the top 10 Teen Vogue op-eds of the year. So Nice. nice. Thank you. Oh, hell yeah. Mike, go ahead. Oh, Mike. Uh, I am Mike from The Humanist Report. Find me on YouTube. Um, I'm also on Twitch every single Wednesday starting next week once again. I'm uh, done with posting my like pre-recorded content for the holidays, which is all old news, but I'll be back next next week on January 2nd. So find me on YouTube. <laughs> I am uh, David Dole on Twitter and on uh, Rational National, of course, on YouTube. And sometimes I'm on Twitch, not often these days, but I'm going to try to get back on there more often. But uh, I have also have all the links to everyone's, everyone here and who's usually here, all their links to their YouTube pages or Twitter pages below this video in the description box on YouTube so you can uh, make sure you follow everybody. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, and thank you all for rocking with our half show. Um, we will have everybody back soon. <laughs> it was a good time, though. I enjoyed this 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 more. Yeah, I thought it was fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was definitely fun. Maybe we'll start doing um, like guests if we have somebody who can't make it because six people. Like, That's true. One yeah, of us are going to be able to miss, or are probably going to miss once in a while. So maybe yeah. guests yeah. will be like a fill in or something, or like a regular thing. Although we're still kind of like finding our vibes. So, yeah. but you know, we'll consider it. And we'll we, we'll resume about a person that we uh, uncancel and cancel when Lance is back. I take it. That's right. Yeah, we'll do that when he gets <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, we can't do it without Lance. Yeah. It's basically his segment. It's, it's his segment, so we'll do mm-hmm. it when he is back. Yeah. Yes. Good. All right. We'll all right. see you all next week. Take care, folks. Have a blast. Bye, y'all. Bye.